I'd like to welcome you to our Planning Commission meeting this evening. This is Planning Commission for um, July 13th, um, 2021. This meeting is being recorded and, and we're happy to have all your residents here as well as representatives from the church and others who are here for items on the agenda. Um, we're gonna begin uh, this meeting is being recorded, and we're going to begin our meeting this evening um, with a prayer from Commissioner Thompson and a Pledge of Allegiance from Commissioner Showers. Our dear Heavenly Father, as we come before thee this, this evening, we're so grateful for the opportunity to gather together as commission members and residents of the city of Linden. We're grateful for the opportunity to live in, this, in such a beautiful place, and we're so grateful for this country which affords us the freedom to be, to live in such a beautiful place with, place with the freedoms we enjoy. Tonight, as we go through our agenda, we ask that thy, thy spirit may be with us, that as commission members, we can listen and be open to the presentations that are being made before us, that we may be able to make the best choices that are the best in the best interest of our community. We're grateful for all of our many blessings. We say these things in the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. Please stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We'll begin our meeting this evening with an audible roll call of the commissioners. Sharon Call, here. Mike Marchbanks, here. Jared Showers, here. Rob Calvis, here. Stephen Johnson, here. And Scott Thompson, here. And Renee Tribe will be joining us in, in a few minutes. Um, the next item on our agenda, these, uh, this is the approval of the minutes. These are from the meeting from June 22nd, 2021. Commissioners have received these ahead of time and had a chance to review the minutes. Um, are there any corrections or changes to the minutes? I didn't see anything. I, I didn't see anything. No, I didn't either. Okay, are we ready for a motion? So moved. Okay, do I have a second on the motion? Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, the next item on our agenda, this would be um, a time for public comment. This would be for any items that are not already on the agenda for this evening. Is there anyone here for that purpose? Okay, the next item on our agenda, this is a conditional use permit with injection mold manufacturing with Birdie Resolution Pharmaceutical. Our applicant is um, Birdie Resolution and Pharmaceutical and our presenting staff is Anders Baig. And is there a representative here from, from Birdie Resolution? Anyone here for that purpose? Then I guess Anders, can yeah. you go ahead? I, the applicant told me they'd be here, maybe they'll come in later. Um, but yeah, so this application is a conditional use permit application um, for Birdie Resolution. They'd like to operate a plastics manufacturing business um, at 810 North, 2800 West. It's in our mixed commercial zone. Um, close to I-15 on the property. There's a building that's split into four commercial units and they'd like to operate their business in two of them. Um, and that the business type requires the conditional use permit in that zone. Um, so the property um, has previously been developed and um, 
uh, gotten approval for their building and site and landscaping, and the business isn't proposing any changes um, to any of those things um, at this time. Um, and then in our mixed commercial zone, uh, there are several requirements regarding uh, maintenance and storage of the properties. Um, this prevents uh, or regulates businesses um, to um, prevent any offensive noise, dust, odor, smoke, or light um, from the business to other properties. Um, it also, as part of the conditional use permit, requires that all production be done indoors um, so the applicant won't be planning to do any sort of business activity outdoors. Um, the zoning ordinance also prevents any storage of junk or, or anything else um, outside. Um, it doesn't allow any storage of merchandise that's visible to the public, um, but the applicant isn't planning to do any merchandise storage either. Um, for parking um, on the property, there's... Um, over 70 parking stalls, um, and the business only ex expects to have six employees for those two units for half the, well, over half the building, um, so there shouldn't be any traffic impact to the, to the property or surrounding properties. Um, and staff don't, does not feel that this um, business should have any um, additional impact to the neighborhood. Um, so, as part of the proposed motion, staff included um, that those sections of the um, mixed commercial zone that um, discuss um, storage and maintenance of the property, just to reemphasize those sections. Um, so the proposed motion is to approve and continue the applicant's request for a conditional use permit to use the property located at 810 North, 2800 West, for an indoors plastic parts manufacturing business with the following conditions. One, the applicant will comply with all the mixed commercial maintenance and storage requirements found in section 1750, 100, and 1750, 110 of the Linden City Code and all items of the staff report. Um, so with that, does the commission have any questions for me? I read the business description here, um, and I think I have an understanding of it. Do you want to just, is there anything else that we need to know about their product? I mean, do they store plastics outside and then inject them or, or what? Are you the applicants? Okay. Oh, yeah. there we go. <laughs> Do you like to come on up? <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll let them address that question. <laughs> okay, and if you could give us your names. Sure. So I'm Peter Reed. Um, okay. I'm the CEO of it. This is uh, my brother, the CEO, uh, Curtis Reed. Um, you were asking about what we're storing. Well, it's just, a, I, I read your business description. I was just wondering if you could kind of explain that a little bit more. And so the materials that we're making are, have been in shortage uh, well before COVID and are going to continue after COVID. So it's all the pipette tips, it's all the plastics, it's all the disposables that the labs use for testing. Small. Small. Uh, the storage of them um, is, is going to be a, around a million dollars worth, which is less than, uh, if you're thinking cubic space, it's less than one of the walls in, in the interior. Um, raw materials... There's nothing stored outside. It's all in, internal. So. Is there any odors put off or? There's no odors. Plastics there's, it's, it's, it's all very clean. There's no byproduct. There's, um, in fact, the technology that we're using, the molds that we're using, there's not even, um, there's not even a byproduct waste product. Okay. So there's nothing that's gonna be disposed, uh, nothing that goes into the air. This is all uh, regulated equipment. Okay. And your customers are not the general public, it's pharmaceutical right. companies who... So this isn't going to have any, any impact on traffic. Um, there's not going to be any customers that come to our doors. Uh, this is stuff that is ordered through major companies like ARUP, Myriad Genetics, that kind of group. I see. Okay. Thank you. Does the product become a point of sales at your address or... No. So everything goes through our distributor. Um, everything is, is packaged up in cases and sent off on a truck. Mm -hmm. But what about the sell, sales tax on the item? 
that goes through the distributor because we're not we're not acting as your manufacturing we're manufacturing the distributor. correct okay. so it goes through them as 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 the distributor have you done this in other locations or this is the first time with this product um we're we're working with i, I mentioned myriad and arup these are these are well-known and reputable companies that mm -hmm. we've mm -hmm. been working with for for years and years so I just wondered why the new location. Um, space. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we're working on bringing this back to the U.S. So what we've seen is a shortage of manufacturing in the U.S., particularly of these parts. So when every time there's been a pandemic, we've seen a shortage of these supplies because countries don't want to let them out. They're using them for themselves. And even if they do let them out, they get stuck on the docks. So, so right now, not, no one can get these parts because they're not manufactured here. So this, this brings manufacturing, new manufacturing to the U.S. and particularly to Utah. Anyone else have questions? I don't, um, I don't see any concerns that I have. I think it fits well under this conditional use um, permit. Um, and, and everything else, I mean, there's no exterior construction. Uh, your employees, you're estimating those will be about six employees. Is that six right? Six currently and, and at maximum 25. would be maybe 20 to 25. Uh -huh. and, and from what the staff report said, you're going to have less traffic than even the previous. Correct. So um, that shouldn't be a problem either. Um, Who was it that you're standing in this? Aspen Copac. Oh, yeah. And as far as noise or anything like that, and then you just function within the normal business hours. Correct. Right? Okay. And, 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 and I put in there specifically right now, there's such a shortage oh, okay. and such a demand. We, yeah. we, we might have to operate outside of those hours just to fulfill what's in the U.S. demand. Um, mm -hmm. When things calm down, then we can obviously back off and, and do what we need to. But but everything would be done internally. So Everything's yeah. internal. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we have to have open doors or customers coming at all hours right. of the day or night. It's, right. it's uh -huh. all internal. Okay. And automated. And automated. All machines are automated. <laughs> Just do their thing. Robots grab your tips. It's all automated. Huh. Are you engineers or working with robotics? Is yes. That we, we have background in engineering. I'm also an attorney. That's uh -huh. the business acumen and, and uh, understanding how that process works. Okay. Uh, we've got engineers that we've hired from, from dare I say, competitors uh, and, and have been working on that project for a few months now. Okay. Are we ready for a motion? I, I'm ready to do a motion. Okay. I move to appro approve the applicant's request for a conditional use permit to use the property located at 810 North 2800 West for an indoor plastic parts manufacturing business with conditions one to two as listed in the staff report. Can I second that motion? Okay, I have a motion and, an, and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Thank so, you. Thank you for coming to Linden. Thank you. <laughs> and good luck to you on your business. I appreciate it. Okay, the next three items on our agenda um, are conditional use, a minor subdivision, site plan approval for a temple for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at approximately 850 East Center Street. And we have representatives here. Uh, would you like to come up to the front, please? Yeah, go ahead and bring yeah. additional chairs. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Uh huh. Absolutely. Question answering. Okay. And our presenting staff is Michael Florence, and and we'll turn things to you to start with. Okay. Thank you, commissioners. Um, it's great to be here with you this evening. So, as many are aware, the the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints has announced uh, a new temple site here in Linden on on this property here at approximately 850 uh, 850 East Center Street. 
So for this application, typically the, the city will notify within 800 feet um, any properties. We, we extended that purposely because of the um, impacts, you know, for, for traffic and to notify more public. So we, we did notify within 1,300 feet. You can see this map shows who was notified. And then we did the normal notifications as well on, on the city website, the state website, and, and uh, we also notified that on Facebook, on our city Facebook page. So with that, I'm gonna go through the, the site plan and the building renderings. Uh, the applicants, please feel, to, feel free to jump in um, on this presentation as well. Here's the site plan. It's approximately 13.3 acre or 13.2 acres. Sorry, let me get that right. 13.11 acres. Uh, the city code requires a minimum half acre lot, 20, 000, or 20,000 square foot lot in a residential zone. They meet all the minimum setback requirements by far. The setback requirements are 10 feet on each side of a building, 30 feet in front and 30 feet in the back. The lot frontage needs to be 100 feet and you know they've, they've got uh, over 1,000 feet. Uh, lot coverage, so the ordinance talks about at least 40% uh, of the area must be maintained in landscaping. The, the, the temple site shows 51.6% uh, in landscaping. It talks about how in the front setback that um, you can't have more than 50% covered in asphalt or driveways. Uh, the, this temple by, site by my calculations is 38% uh, from the front of the temple. So if we counted only the 30 feet uh, for the front setback, we, you know, we, we'd probably be a similar percentage. So uh, we went through the landscaping. The, so like I said, just over 51%. You do have a residential single family home in this area on the west side of the property that um, is currently there with tenants. So to mitigate that, any impacts for the parking or lighting, what, what they're proposing is a 30 foot landscape setback. And I'll, I'll show you the landscape plan in just a little bit, but this will be a 30 foot setback. They'll have 20 foot setbacks along the um, center street the sidewalk's a, a, a wider sidewalk. It's it's a 10-foot sidewalk. And then in the back, you you have uh, 45 to the minimum here. I think it was 45 I measured the other day um, in landscaping on the back here next to the tennis courts if, and, the, and the ball field. If I could just add a, a point on the residential uh, home to the west, there is a solid 7-foot high CMU fence yeah. that that will uh, provide privacy between the home and the parking. Yeah, and the, the remaining fence will, correct me if I'm wrong, but it'll be a wrought iron fence, ornamental wrought iron fence uh, surrounding the, the remaining sides of the property. Yeah, so fairly open, uh, transparent, but uh, all code compliant. An ornamental steel, I mean, it, it, it's, it's not necessarily wrought iron, but an ornamental steel fence Decorative. with, with yeah. pilasters that will It'll look good. I think we've got a picture of. Sorry, these take these are big documents. Yeah. They thought I included one in there, but I may not have. Yeah, I don't believe it. It's in this set. Okay. So parking the our city ordinance requires that that there be one parking space for every four fixed seats in, the t um, in any um, religious building, church, or assembly uh, building. I've got a, uh, sorry, this does not want to move very quickly. Let me go through this table real quick. This, you can see the, the, the table here, the, the fixed seating, there will be a total of 471, which our city ordinance would require 119 stalls. They'll also have 820 loose seats for a total of 324 
um, seats that would would be required by our city code. And the, the city code is actually only off the 119. Um, but now the total number of parking stalls provided for the site is 500 parking stalls. So the site should be well parked uh, on site to, to accommodate all of the parking. Also might mention that uh, there will be a crosswalk uh, installed on Center Street between the existing meeting house to the north. So if there's a need for overflow parking, that that uh, doesn't occur on the street as much as it could in the existing meeting house parking. Mm -hmm. Which we anticipate would be rare, but could happen during the peak times. As a normal rule, I don't think that would extend into that chapel parking. Okay. So let me go through the landscape plan. Let's see. Actually, let me see which is next. Okay, so this plan, it does show the seven foot masonry wall. It's in purple here. It's a little hard to see. That's identified here on the, on the screen as the seven foot um, CMU screen wall. This shows the, the different um, you know, amenities on the site with the decorative benches, um, garbage trash receptacles, the, the bollards, and I'll, I'll get into lighting a little bit more in a minute. This is the landscape plan. You have a combination of, on this side next to the residential, a combination of linden trees, linden plane trees, spruce trees that will, will act as a, a good buffer along this uh, west side, side separating the, the, that is single family home. You can see there's a lot of trees on the site. A lot of, you know, all of the temple sites are well landscaped. And across the front, uh, they've got the linden trees that um, are spaced every 30 feet along the the front along State Street. You can see the, the large plaza area here between Center Street and the, and the Temple Building. Another large plaza area to the south, also as well on the sides with seat walls. You've got a large landscaped area here where, where it goes up on the hill a little ways. Um, um, maybe you can explain what this area is up here. Yeah, there's some small pedestrian meandering paths that circulate around the perimeter of the site. And then there are these um, kind of quiet nodes for pedestrians to just um, sit uh, in those uh, lawn panel areas and uh, uh, observe and, and ponder. So more pedestrian scale landscaping around the perimeter. And, and one other thing to note, like too, just that the additional plaza, it's not really showing, it's not obvious in this plan, but on the north, Mm -hmm. or excuse me, on the east. The east plaza is the one, yeah, on that side where we would expect um, wedding parties who were attending ceilings to be doing photos and families can gather. So it'll be a nice plaza there as well. And this area up there in the corner will be kind of a, a, a nice area to be able to take pictures. Yeah, photo op opportunity. A little bit higher on the site. Any questions about the landscaping? From the commission in that corner is that where you're also going to be doing wrought iron or your your or you're going to be the masonry on that side uh, that, that will be the decorative metal fence up in that corner so just on the west will be the solid fence and then the open decorative fence is everywhere else right. and we perimeter. say west just west where we border the residential yeah i'm clear on the west i'm talking about the east side where it goes along the murdoch trail you know the, the canal where people are riding their bikes and all that that'll remain transparent okay. with the open fence. I just want to be clear on that. Yeah. And, and we're keeping all of the equipment off of the roof as much as possible because of that elevated view and, right. uh, you know, keeping that as, as clean and Because you've got neighbors looking right down exactly. on that, so. You're one of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, I think but yeah. One of them too. But there are people here that are part of that group that are looking for visual aesthetics and they don't want to be looking at all the. Yeah. We, we HVAC and on the, the building really want to take that into account so that you're not looking at mechanical systems and clutter up on the roof. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I included the site, the floor plans for the buildings. It would probably be better if you guys want to explain those. You, you know them a little bit better than I do. Okay, no problem. Uh, sure. So we're looking here at the basement level. Uh, so mm -hmm. one level below the entry. Uh, in fact, it might be better to page forward one and let's look at the main level just uh, for orientation purposes. 
So to the left <coughs> is, is, nor, uh, is south and to the right is north. Uh, it's a dual entry temple. Um, the left entrance is the baptistry entrance uh, that will mostly be utilized by youth groups. Uh, and it, it faces the, uh, th there's a fair amount, amount of parking on the south side of the temple, so quick and easy access there. Um, the north entrance is for uh, all other patrons. So you can enter from either side, pass through, and, and get to either entrance as needed. Um, the, main ent the main level would include a, a waiting area for um, recommend holders and then also a recommend desk for um, uh, non-recommend holders. So all those that are invited to the temple have a place to be accommodated uh, for, for wedding parties. Um, administration is mostly located on this level. Um, some uh, dressing rooms, some training rooms, uh, and then uh, a, a grand stair that uh, elevates up through the building. Uh, so back one page would be uh, the basement again. And located on this level, uh, there will be two baptistry, baptistry fonts in this uh, particular design uh, with associated um, dressing rooms, uh, a laundry facility to launder the clothing that's part of these, um, these fonts, uh, and then mechanical systems located uh, on this level. Uh, the mechanical systems for the project uh, are located in an in outbuilding, an ancillary building that has uh, a similar uh, decorative or a CMU wall that uh, uh, screens all of the equipment, screens the dumpster, screens the transformer, so none of that is visible uh, on the site. Um, and, and so within the, the building itself, the mechanical systems are very quiet and, uh, and those screen walls at the mechanical yard uh, damper the noise and uh, make that a very quiet uh, experience for the. So that screening is that a solid surface? It it is a it is a solid surface on the exterior and on the okay. interior of it, it. There are sound attenuation baffles mm -hmm. to okay. even attenuate the sound <coughs> more so. So it's uh, not only been engineered, but it's been tr tried and and proven on many other temple projects. Thank you. And it's an air, it's an air cooled chiller, HVAC system that is housed in that yard. And and the the adva one of the advantages of that system is it does not produce the pl the plume of uh, of mist or uh, on on certain temperature days, so it won't be a visible uh, thing seeing seeing that off of the mechanical tower. So uh, so quiet and vis visually uh, pleasing. Um, that's the main function of the, of the baptistry and basement level. Uh, if we move up, uh, go forward two pages, we move up to uh, what are considered uh, ordinance rooms. Uh, so these are instruction rooms within the, within the temple. There are uh, dressing rooms for patrons on this level as well. Um, waiting chapel. Waiting chapel uh, on this level. And... Uh, Moving upward to the, the top level, uh, this is partially ordnance spaces again, and uh, here's where the mechanical systems come inside the building and off of the roof, and so they're housed internally in the temple uh, on this uppermost level, uh, all the air handlers and, and things to control the, the environment within the building, so that's... Uh, a great concession by the church, I'll just say, uh, in sacrificing square footage there to get that off of the roof and to make it a, a more uh, pleasing experience for the community. I believe that the total square footage is around 86,000 yes. square feet. Yes, and and there there was a little bit of a fluctuation in our square footage as uh, this, as we contemplated initial um, exterior finishes or the skin around the building. Um, as we've landed on, uh, which will be the next. I don't, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of you here or not. Yes, go, we'll go to that. Sorry, I was just looking for another document. So, so the point being, it's just if the square footage has gone up slightly from what we initially anticipated, we were trying to keep it as low as possible, but it's gone up just a little bit. Yeah. Part of that's due to the seismic analysis that needed to be done specific for this site. How do we accommodate those, those structures within the, the footprint of the building? 
And then how do we clad the building with uh, a stone system, which is proposed here, a granite um, stone for the exterior of the building, which, which is going to be you know, one, of the, one of the finest uh, materials to, to <coughs> clad that building with. So it'll, it'll be a beautiful facade on the exterior. Uh, other materials used in addition to stone are uh, a patinaed bronze uh, for the window elements, for the window frames, the spire structure, um, and then inset within those bronze frames will be uh, decorative artisan art glass uh, with uh, uh, motifs of, of flora, and uh, uh, there'll be a, a, a nice backlit element during the evening uh, when the lights are on to, to illuminate and light, light up the, the facade. And just to clarify, bronze color, it's not solid bronze. <laughs> yes. And, and, and uh, it may be worth uh, pointing out that there is not an angel on top of this particular temple design. So, so what's the purpose of that, not having one? Well, that's just... We, we miss that special that we don't yeah. have. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not special that you don't have one. We have, in the past, if you're familiar with the temples that the church does, we have Angel Moroni on many of the temples. Most of the designs that have been being approved over the last few years are discontinuing that. And so, so you're not unique in that way. <laughs> but you have two spires. Yeah, and two spires, the and the two that. baptistries is very it's unique. It's not something that's in very many, only one other. There, there are two porches, if you will, covered porches at each entry. So you know, that's inclement weather, that'll be nice for drop off and uh, access in the temple. We had one question from our council member: if you knew where the granite was was coming from. Where are you sourcing it from? Well. It's not, it's not, it's not finalized yeah. yet. We're looking at a couple of different sources. And I mean, do you... I, we're, you don't so, have to say yeah, I, I, would, I would defer committing on anything there. We have several that are, that are being considered um, that are European granites, <laughs> primarily. Let's just say Beaner's the source. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Uh, let's talk about height real quick. On, on the temple, the so the overall height of the building. So the way we're measuring this with our city code, the overall height of the building is 154 feet, and that that's measured to this point. And then the spire on top of that is approximately 70 feet. So what our city code says is the planning commission can give a height exception of the 35 feet, so you can approve heights above 35 feet. Um, and then, and then for the spire that has its own separate, so it says you can go up to a church may have architectural features similar to those listed above, which is, which calls out the spire tower, uh, lofts, things like that. Similar to those listed above erected up to 50% of the building height or 20 feet of the zone limit, whichever is greater. So You've got the 154 the, for the building height, the 70 feet for the spire, which is less than the 50% of the 154. So the planning commission will need to, to give that approval for the additional height of 224 feet. We've included that in your motion that I'll, that I'll go over it, um, at the end of the presentation. One thing I'd like to mention in the siting of the building on the site you can see that it's roughly centered on the site, and as was mentioned, the, the setbacks that are allowed you know, far exceed any of the setback requirements, but from the front and the back of the site, you're roughly 275 feet from the north and the south, and uh, on the two side yards, you're uh, roughly 180 feet on either side. So by centering that in the center of the site, it, it will help as you are a passerby on the, on the walking trail on Center Street. Um, that'll help, I think, settle the scale of that building in the site and within the community. So I think that's an advantage working, working forward. So any questions about elevations or, or height, commissioners? 
Well, on that height, as far as, because that is one thing that the Planning Commission will need to make to approve. Um, so I guess we would do that as part of the motion. That's correct. I've included that in the motion. Yeah. Okay. Is the elevation of this uh, pad site, is it going to be graded to be flat or is it going to be built on a hill? So the, the grading, uh, other than a, a small section that abuts the canal property, which will require some small retaining walls, um, it'll have a gradual slope, but uh, no other retaining walls. The temple itself will, will raise up in, on a, a couple of feet of plinth so that it's not at a low point, but the site will gradually be graded uh, from east to west, uh, east being the high point, you have about 40 feet of drop across the east to west. Uh, so it, it will feel fairly gradual and level's probably not the right term, but it won't feel extreme in, right. in its well, grading. You, you wouldn't think there was a 40 foot drop just looking at it from that east to west, but, but yeah. there is. And so, so it, it'll, it'll be fairly level as Chad and, says. And the elevations are measured from the highest point or so, the upper. So we'll go off of, typically with a sidewalk is where we'll measure that that point on the street and so average is and we'll measure off the four corners of the building and, okay. and everything so yeah we'll take that average off the four corners of the building yeah so any other questions before we move on okay let's talk about lighting real quick the so there'll be this is the street lighting with uh, this is our city street light standard for Center Street. There'll be four of these uh, structures along Center Street. The, uh, we've updated the standard a little bit so that it doesn't have the acorn bulb anymore any longer. So it's just flat uh, with an LED, a uh, lot more dark sky compliant and, and more efficient. So I'll show you where th these will go on. So there'll be four of them at the en entrances there. Uh, and then one at the top along uh, Center Street. The other lighting, interior lighting for the site, you will have uh, pathway bollards, uh, lighting, uh, pole lighting around the temple with, with this acorn structure, very similar to the city standard uh, that we have in other areas of the city, and then the parking lot lighting. These, are, these parking lot lighting are, uh, structures are 20 feet in height, this acorn style or, or more of the 16 feet with the three foot bollards. So let me get to the right. So anything in pink and these are these are hard to see. Th these are your your parking lot lights here. Those have been pulled away as, as uh, from the this residential home to the west and, and they're more just on the corners of, of these parking lot um, islands. The other luminaires you can see are more in the, the entryway. Those other pole features are around the plaza areas. And then the, then, um, the, the bollard lights are more on the pathway way areas. Anything you want to add? Yeah, I just I would like to add that those lights are also on a, a motion sensor. So as those lights are turned off at night, as the temple's closed, um, those lights go off as well. If, if uh, for any reason someone's in the site and moving through the parking lot, the light senses their movement, turns on, and then shortly after it turns off. So when lights are off, they're, they're off in the parking area unless someone makes a motion in there. Do they go off or just to a percentage? They're turned off. The but but we'll, we'll keep some minimal lighting for safety, yeah. and, and, the, yeah. and the building yeah. is intended to be lit. Um, but but the there's no reason area. to light the whole parking lot all night, either from an energy efficiency mm -hmm. standpoint or from a you know, light in the surrounding community standpoint. So it will, you know, we'll handle safety and security, but we're not going to blow the thing up all night and have it right. have it bright. Mm -hmm. What about? Um, I know at some of the temples they do even the lights that are on the temple itself, they do dim those mm -hmm. sometimes at night. Uh, is, is that a possibility or how do you handle that? Well, so our, our target illumination of the building, if you want to talk yeah. about that, is, is not really, really bright to start with. Uh -huh. um, 
So Th there's been there's been more engineering and more uh, temples since the Mount Timpanogos Temple uh, has been constructed. But if we look at that as a comparison, that has an average of uh, five foot candles on the the vertical building mass itself. Mm -hmm. And as it as it moves up to the spire, that light increases to ten foot candles. Okay. Our project is proposing three foot candles, so almost half on the building itself and six foot candles on the spire. Mm -hmm. So again, trying to about half what you might be familiar with on, on that project. Um, and, and that's our target there. We, we may be able to dial that uh, down a bit more, but um, trying to be even more uh, conscientious of the illumination of the, the temple itself, the neighbors, and so right. uh, dialing that down is, okay. is okay. our goal there. Enough elevation there that this will be able to be seen from the freeway. Uh, it, there's a it, it it depends maybe it probably will be the, the tower probably will be seen from the freeway. If they turn the lights up all the way. Yeah, if we turn the lights <laughs> up all the way. Yeah, well that that's the thing. Yeah, it'll have to be pretty bright to be able to see it at night, especially. Um, but yeah, there's probably a sight line there. There's a lot between the freeway and us, though, as you know. Agreed. Yeah. So, and, and we're looking up. Kinda, it's kind of down in, too. Rather than down. It's easier to see the ones you're looking down at sometimes, but, mm -hmm. or if we're way up on a hill, and we're sort of in between that, so. Thank you. Yeah. So with lighting, real quick, the uh, photometric study was provided. The, it, so if you, if you notice, it's, it's, you know, brighter around the lights. It diminishes as you get to the landscaping. So... You can see how these are at you know 1.6, 2.2. As you get closer to the property lines, you know those are like 0 0.4, 0 0.5, so it, 0 0.2. And so it's that way all around the site, so that they don't have light spill over into adjoining properties when when those lights are on. And, and another strategy for the lighting uh, to go off in the parking areas. This might address your your question a little more on a on a finer point um, because the site is gated with the fence and gates, those will be locked when the lights are turned off so you, you don't have just random uh, people going into a, a dark uh, parking area. But they would actually, the lights would come on if they could. All right. And then the last thing I wanted to cover, and unless the applicants want to cover anything else, is, is uh, just the traffic study. They had MHTN perform a traffic study. That That's you know, we, we've had a few phone calls from residents asking about that. They they looked at the the following intersections as part of that. These these six intersections to determine, you know, are they going to fail? Uh, is there going to be any issues with the increased traffic from the temple at peak hours? So when there's the highest demand, uh, is there going to be any issues with those six intersections? So right now, let me go to the, and our, and our city engineer is on, on Zoom as well, and he'll, he can help answer any questions and, uh, as I go through this as well. So, the, so right now, if you look at 2021, this is what those intersections, they, they went out there on three or four different dates in January, uh, different times throughout the day, and, and looked at those intersections. So right now, they... They all operate at either a level A or a level B. So it's like a it's like school. You know, A is great, F is mm -hmm. is is worse. So it's not failing, but it, it, it's it's you know it, it's just letter grades like that. So there's there's a with growth they, they count growth into this. This counts as a two percent per year growth. So if you look at the 2020 future 2023. Uh, just with growth, that remains pretty much the same on those. It does stay the same. So then you add the project in. The only intersection that increases from an A to a B, and your your time frame sitting at that intersection goes from 9.8 uh, seconds to 10.4. So it goes from an A to a B, so that's with the project. And then if you look at uh, the future uh, with those you know, adding the two percent and add, you know, end with the uh, temple project. You can see they, they still stay within the um, B's and C's. Anything above C in this instance is average and, and is still functioning well. Uh, the let me see if I got any other. So 
couple other items on this as far as traffic in and peak hours from the temple. Okay, so AM peak hours, approximately chip trip generation, 162 vehicle trips, and the evening peak hours would be 243. And they also, they looked at, you know, kind of what, what that does for these intersections. You know, it, it, so let's, let's take one, for example, let, let's take um, this one at, at 700 East or 700 or 725 East. So during peak hours right now, you have 46 cars going north on Center Street. You have 176 that uh, turn into uh, Oak Canyon Junior High. What that does with the, the future traffic, that, that increases from 115 going north, 183 going to Oak Canyon Junior High. So most of that will, will not clog up the, the side streets, for example, those, those, that traffic's heading uh, to the temple site. And the, the, these are during just your peak hours in the, in the morning and the evening. During the rest of the hours, those will be less along Center Street. Let me... That's traveling east, right? That that is travel. Yes, that that in that instance, what I talk about is, is traveling east. They have they have these same numbers for going west and or sorry, going uh, west and, and north and south as well. Uh, Trent, do you have anything you'd like to add? No, I think you covered it pretty well, Mike. Okay, Mr. Rich, do you have anything? Do you guys want to add I just have a couple of closing comments and a, just a quick comment on, on the traffic. On the traffic, yes. Okay, just on the traffic. But what we found with the temples as we've studied these and, and looked at the peak hour trips, it's, just, it doesn't, it's not a traffic jam generating kind of use. There's a steady flow in and out, but it's a calm flow. And I think that, that you know, is demonstrated in the, in the traffic study. So we don't anticipate it to be a, a negative effect at all, as, as Mike has anticipated. That's correct. And, and if you look at that table, the go back. If you, there really is not an impact um, with the temple and the future growth. It's, it's, you know, it continues to rise every year. But, but those delays at the intersections, you know, for example, Center Street and Ninth East here, currently at 10.8. You know, you, you go up to. to 13 in, in 2028, but with the future project plus growth in 2023, you know, you only go from 10.4 to, to 10.5, or sorry, I was on the wrong one, 10.8 to 12.2, so not, not, a, not a big difference. Um, so does the commission have any questions on, on the traffic study? Um, you know, I can see where the traffic study would show that there wouldn't be a big impact. Uh, you know, and, and I'm sure it'll be managed, but that is, those peak hours for the temple are also the peak hours for, for those schools that are right there too. And with you, you got three schools along that road. So um, there, there will be a lot of traffic during those peak hours. I think when you find, find your major peak hours in the temples are Friday nights and Saturday mornings. And, and then other evenings. Early morning, yes, there is, there is a flow in and out. That's not our biggest peak, so. But, but yes, you're right, it will overlap with school traffic somewhat. Mm -hmm. um, but usually it's early, earlier morning, you know, six, between six and eight. And after that, the temple traffic is gonna start dying down. So one other thing, uh, the applicants mentioned the, the crosswalk over to the, the chapel to the north. So th this shows the, the crosswalk there. They also s show some, um, what do you call it, traffic calming as you, um, as you come to the temple site. So uh, that, that will help slow traffic down as well. You know, the, the street trees will, will make the, the street appear more narrower as well. And so the, the, you should have a, a slower traffic uh, volume going, going through that temple uh, block area.
And, and does it help to know that we've got bike racks for those kids to ride, ride in and then ride to school? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there may be some crossover there. <laughs> Michael, I have a question. Uh, more directed to staff. It relates to the traffic a little bit, but, uh, you know, the temple, I'm sure, will improve the roadway and sidewalk curb and gutter in front of the temple. Um, I just have a concern or a, one, a, a question as to just west of the temple on Center Street. It's, it's kind of a, a menagerie right now. Um, this whole Center Street from from say Main Street up or State Street up, does the city see any improvements needing to be done there or yeah. finished sidewalks, et cetera, in conjunction with this project? Yeah, we do. So we, we've been working on a, a plan with all the city staff that, so this year there'll be two water lane projects that will go in on, well, sorry, it'll be this fiscal year. So it'll either be this fall or, or spring. Uh, so two, two water line projects on Center Street, and then we'll also, you know, the, the plan is to uh, fix Center Street, you know, repave it so that, you know, you have a nice drive along Center Street. It, we understand that, you know, it, it's, it's, it's got issues that, uh, and we do want to correct those. So. Will it be sidewalk? All the way from State Street. You know what, we're we're evaluating that. You know that that's something the the council would have to budget for, and so um, it it is on the north side. It, we have curb gutter sidewalk that, or curb gutter in the trail on the north side, uh, so that is something we're currently evaluating. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'm hoping we'll really get that finished on the south side, so those on the south side of Center Street, and it can just match right up with what they're completing. Yeah, and a. a Maybe a, a second better pedestrian crossing closer to 720 at 725 in center mm -hmm. that the junior high kids can use. Yeah. Can you guys throw that in? <laughs> so we, we would look at all we would look at bridge? the others. Yeah, yeah. A pedestrian bridge. Maybe. We'd love that. <laughs> yeah. With any improvements, we would look at the crosswalks and you know the the middle or the sorry the elementary school right here ha has some issues as well and so. Our engineers will, will look at all of those things. Okay. That's good. Uh, so, we, we, so yeah. So to answer your question, we are working on a plan for that. Okay. Is that just to say that's not incorporated in this proposal? No, they'll do their own improvements on the just south on, side. Just on the, that's the south side. Yep. Well, and I asked um, Mike earlier today. You know, as you come up Center Street towards 900 East, there is a kind of a fence and and paved asphalt thing that kind of juts out and. If you're driving that at night, it's difficult to see. And and from what he told me, that 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 was city property that has been donated. That, Is no, that we, right? we sold Pretty that true. to the. Uh, or sold, yeah. not yeah. donated. And there yeah. will be a light new light structure up there, so that'll help light that that yeah. bend in the road as well. But that bend will be straightened out. Up no, there it will top. not. It will not. It will not. So let, let me go back oh, to the site plan. Can we fix that? real quick so the the, the same road profile or, or same you know road you know it, it's still it's it'll still make a curve there so but oh, but you will have some light it'll be landscaped you will have some, a light structure up here um, in that landscaped area mm. along the street that's been pretty tricky there for mm -hmm. quite a while <laughs> Yeah, but where you, that road comes out, you know, where that comes out. Mm -hmm. It's got that old farm fencing right there. Do you know what she's talking about? Yes. That weird gate. That's where the yeah. Yeah. That's gone. Yep, so you'll have curb gutter, sidewalk, lighting, landscaping. Okay. So it'll help improve that a lot better. Yeah. Okay. We, um, this isn't a public hearing, but we do, um, we always allow comments from the public. Um, so is there someone here? Let, let me, has, let's finish, go ahead. Okay. let me go through the motions real quick and then okay. we'll, and we'll finish up the presentation then if you don't mind we can Ask for input yeah. from the public, okay. So, so as Commissioner Call mentioned at the beginning, 
This is three separate items. So the, so the Planning Commission is reviewing the conditional use permit uh, for the temple use. The, the, the only condition the city had on that um, from city staff was that the monument sign and the building signs are approved with the use and the building. Uh, then the minor subdivision is consolidating the five parcels into one lot. The five existing parcels, there's, uh, we've recommended five conditions there that the applicant will continue to work with the city engineer to make all final corrections to the engineering documents plat, complete or post an adequate improvement completion assurance warrant and post required assurance for all required public infrastructure improvements. Prior to the plat recording, the applicant will update the final mylar to include notarized signatures with owner, of owner's consent to dedication and obtain signatures of all entities indicated on the subdivision plat. The plans and plat will meet the, and be constructed as per specifications as, as found in the Linden City Development Manual. And then site plan uh, motion would be the development be allowed a six foot ornamental fence which meets clear view requirements in the front setback. The overall height of the building, including the two steeples, are approved at 224 feet. The applicant will continue to work with the city engineer to make all final corrections to the engineering documents. The plans will meet the development specifications as found in the Linden City Development Manual and all items of the staff report. So with that, we'd be am glad to answer any qu final questions the commissioner has, commission has for us at this time. Um, I don't have a specific question, but I think it... And maybe you did this already and I didn't catch it, but um, that ordinance that allows the Planning Commission to make an exception on the height, mm -hmm. maybe it wouldn't yeah, so that, hurt that's, to go ahead and, and provide that to the public. Yeah, so it's found in... 17, Section 1744-100 allows the Planning Commission to grant a height exception for religious buildings as follows. The height of churches in some cases may exceed 35 feet and shall be reviewed and may be approved by the Planning Commission if the Planning Commission finds that no neighboring property owner will be substantially damaged by the approval of such. And then I gave the heights again. And then right. 1704 is the... 230 it says penthouse roof structure or roof structures for housing elevators stairways tanks ventilating fans or similar equipment required to operate and maintain the building and attached structures such as fire or a parapet wall skylights towers steeples chimneys wireless or television masts thereafter or theater lofts or similar structures may be erected 10 feet above the zoning height limits but in no space above the height limit shall be allowed for purpose of providing additional floor space nor shall such, such increased height be in violation of any other ordinance or regulation of Linda City. A church may have architectural features similar to those listed above, erected up to 50% of the building height or 20 feet above the zone height limit, whichever is greater. So that's where we came in. Right. That's where the 70 foot steeple uh, comes in. Okay. Yeah, I just thought that might be helpful. Okay. Um, others have questions from the commission? I had one more question on the ornamental fencing. Are there any um, finials on the steels that are going to be poking up or anything like that? Or will we see out the window there, the black, how yeah. it's just straight across? Let me, let me grab that. I, I can pull that. Because I didn't see a picture of that. But, you know, we did a traffic study, but did we do a wildlife study? Because there are going to be a lot of deer that are going to like the flora and fauna in there. And we have a lot of deer that can clear the fence and doesn't want anybody to get impaled. impaled. Yeah, it'll be very similar to that. Fence Just flat and go over. Finials. Yes. Okay. On the top. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the gate. Sorry, I meant <laughs> to include that in your staff report. Okay. I missed that. It does but, have the, those pickets to extend up a little bit, but it just doesn't have the... the, the but not on the... Not e but the won't be on the east side. Yeah. Along the east side, we won't have those. The, the, for that, a portion, you will. No, the, the pointing up beyond the fence, like you have on the gate. Yes, those are those going to be on the east side? You know, I, That's a great question. Think, I'm not sure we even know the answer to that, do yeah. we? I, the outer landscape guy here. It was but, the height there. That's six, the six feet. Six feet. Yeah, it looks like they were occurring on the gates. Got the, he's got it without, without it in the main view. I just think that would be something to consider 
around the perimeter, we have a lot of large deer and around they here. Roam freely. They do. They? That's interesting. <laughs> we have thought of that. Yeah. Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she would tell she wanted us to build a tent with them. You get ten foot, whatever you need to be protected <laughs> as the deer. Okay. Okay. Electrical, <laughs> electrical <laughs> fence. I don't know. It's up to you. That's interesting. That's a, well, just something to consider on that. Yeah. yeah on the perimeter. Yeah, let's let let's let commissioner let's let commissioner. Oh, we'll finish up here and then okay. we'll put it out there. Yeah, we'll we'll finish with questions here and then we're happy to take questions from the commission. I mean, from the residents. Any other questions from? Well, you did the say church? that there is a bike rack. Yes. That would accommodate because I could see this being a very walkable mm -hmm. and bikeable destination for people in the area. Right. And so. I like what you've done where you can walk very nicely from Center Street to the entrance, but where would you put the bike rack? The bike rack, the bike rack I believe we have located down near the ancillary structure toward the bottom left. And our ordinance will require so many bike sure. parking per, for a ratio with the stalls as well. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really accessible to that rear entrance and kind of there set back into the property a little ways. That's where we have them. So that's the south entrance then? Yeah, it would yeah it's, it's south of the building, kind of southwest of the building is, is where we're planning to locate those. Okay, especially your youth could just pedal down there on their bikes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's what we're hoping. <laughs> and that's the youth or entrance. Yeah. yeah. Or there's skateboard. <laughs> okay. Skateboard. <laughs> any other questions from the commission? I, I don't have any. Before we ask the um, residents or public to... At night, is there? Any, is it going to be on all night? Is that the plan, versus off at three? Or I, I just don't know if there's a standard for that. Mm -hmm. So, so we talked about that earlier. Are you talking about on the building or the on the, or building, the site on the building? Generally, what has been happening on most of our our uh, temples across the Wasatch Front is they they generally remain lit during the during the night to some degree. I don't know where it was. There was one that I was driving by really, I don't remember where in the country, but it was off at some unsightly hour that I was out. But, um, I probably need it for security. Okay. We do. There are some municipalities who have very, very strict rules about that. And, and we try to be good community members and, and comply with those things. Perfect. Thank you. Um, let's go ahead and take some, some questions uh, from the residents or the public, whoever's here. I, and if I you'll raise your hand and state your name, please. Fly a lateral. Okay. I'm just in, interested in what the elevation change is from the, bike, from the canal path and the basic area, the parking and that of, of the temple area, the elevation difference of those two. So the, the total elevation change from the canal at the east property line all the way to the west property line is about 40 feet. 40 feet. And so you're at the temple uh, proper, you're roughly, we'll say half that, yeah. maybe up to 20 foot tall. Yeah. I mean, because of all the drainage and the rest of that is all working towards Center Street, is it really taking Second South or the canal serious into account? Consideration there. Yeah, the, uh, that's a great point you bring up. Part of the um, storm drain system design is uh, in cistern under the parking lot so that we're not uh, shedding water from the parking surface into Center Street and, and overwhelming the street. So that'll be uh, metered at a rate uh, that the city storm drain can handle that. Mm -hmm. Okay, sir. Mark Rogers, um, question for the member of the city. Parking, we live very close to the temple, just straight up at the very end of Center Street. All of that Center Street back into by the Rufus and, and so forth um, could easily become a parking lot in large part. I mean, that's sort of my question. Is the city willing to put a sign saying no parking? I mean, what 
It's a city street, and so you know the, the city always has control of, of parking. Now, I, I we would evaluate that as it as it goes, as it, you know, as, as we go along. Um, I have seen where the the temple has put up signs sometimes in, and on next to neighboring properties, asking patrons to please park in the in the on the temple sites and, and things. So yes, we we would monitor that. We don't want this to have an impact on surrounding properties, they, they will have the chapel to the north as, as overflow parking as well. So if we see an issue, yeah, we'll, we'll take care of that. And Mike, their, yep. their site plan actually already shows no parking signs along the frontage, in front of oh. the temple along Center Street. So Sorry, that's our city engineer. So, so he said the site plan does show no parking signs already in, in front of the temple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sir? Uh, Dennis Wilson. Uh, so years ago, there was a comment made, uh, speaking of the, the, the road right in front there on the west side, or the south side, excuse me, uh, to the west of the temple, that uh, uh, the city needs to just take the frontage of the houses right there on the west side, because they'd have more room uh, into the school and stuff. Uh, not realizing that they're talking about my property. My property's in the corner lot right there. Uh, and so I'm curious to know what impact you guys are planning on, because I'm all for, for the temple, don't get me wrong, but I want to know what you guys are planning on as far as taking property in the front there. I'll let Mike answer that, but I, I'm not sure there is a plan on that yet. Yeah, th currently there's not a plan. We, we understand that there's a difference between the road widths there, and um, if you know, when we do put a, put a plan together, we'll, that's something we'll definitely have to come talk to you about. Okay. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, William, just a question on the uh, east side of the property <coughs> where the fence line ties in with the, uh, the Murdoch Trail. So the, right now there's quite an issue with uh, weeds and different things. Will the city do any landscaping on the Murdoch side of that fence? I don't know that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know that as well. I don't think it's owned by the city. It's the company. It's, it's, the, it's the county. Canal, canal. It's the county. Right away. Over River. Pedestrian right, mm -hmm. right away. You can incur that much to do any grade B. Yeah. I, I think it would be real bad to have them right uh, get them another fence that was going to be looking right through into those weeds. Yeah. I know we've had that. We've had some just, you know, just internal discussions, but at this point we haven't we don't have any plans solidified okay do we have someone over in the far left who may have input on that or so my name is dave fox i'm from silver river we're not going to allow the landscaping to be done on our property either. Okay. why is that because we are trying to maintain it the last stump through and repair that pipe that's in there everything can get tore out we're not going to come in there and tear through the weeds tear that we've already lost the weed we're already what about weed control? Yeah, I think that's reasonable, but weed control is what we're talking about. Yeah, he looks right on it. I'd love to make a comment about that because that canal trail was never landscaped the way it was advertised to us that it was going to be. Okay, well, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure on that. That was before I started working for these guys. But in order for us to comply with the NEPA documents, we have to return it to its natural state. And then you just talked about all the deer and animals. Frank Mansell, I live in the cul-de-sac just north of the temple, and um, my concern is this secondary water. I assume the secondary water will be used to uh, irrigate the uh, property. Is that correct? Uh, when the vegetable yeah. growers were in there, whenever they started their irrigation, uh, up in our cul-de-sac, our pressure sig was significantly reduced. And I don't know what the... Uh, you'll have with your irrigation of the temple, but 
I can't even pop up my sprinklers currently. And I don't know if that's because of the drought, but that's, that's been going on for quite a while, especially when they were irrigating there. So my concern is the pressure in secondary water in our, in our particular cul-de-sac uh, that we have. Is there any study been done or consideration for what we might do in the future? Well, from our perspective, um, we obviously, that won't work for us either to have no pressure in the, in the irrigation system, and we obviously wouldn't want to be taking pressure from others. So it's our understanding and intent that, <laughs> that what the irrigation supply can deliver will cover us. So if there are some infrastructure improvements to irrigation, that's not something that we have been informed of to this point. And we agree that it should certainly be understood and that city provided um, secondary irrigation, I believe. Right. From what I understand, too, you, um, I mean, the church is moving towards um, Zero landscaping that, that takes less water, too. Is, is true, that correct? That's true. You are irrigating less than what you would be farming mm -hmm. um, yeah. over there. So, but, but, I, but I made a note of that, and mm. I'll, I'll be glad to look into it. Probably yeah. less than if it were developed into half lot subdivisions too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd suspect that on the irrigation, it's wide. O they open it up wide open for flood irrigation to run run that way, and that takes a lot more pressure. Where the the temple should be providing sprinkler irrigation, which is will create the back pressure that hopefully will help alleviate the problem you're seeing. Okay, hand back here. Yeah, I'm. My name's Bill Keach. I'm the owner of the property. First of all, I, I'm grateful that they put a 30-foot buffer mm -hmm. and a 10-foot wall. Because that, that was a big concern that we have a lot of light flooding into our, into our area. I still have a little concern with a 40-foot slope. And I came and looked at the plans with Mike yesterday to store tech the tanks that you're putting in there. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we have some of those really big rains, if we'll be able to handle it or it'll all funnel towards <laughs> Because I know when during big rainstorms it would flood across my back, because I sold that acre as well as you guys. It would flood across that acre and down into uh, Dave Bolger's property. And it just flooded in the water. And secondly, there's a, about a two foot drop between the, the church's property now and our, on our land. And I'm not sure if you can maybe stop the tank so we can buffer that up so it, it doesn't fall down. Any, what you, any thoughts? Um, so, on let's handle the stormwater question first. Um, the way that that is designed is, is I think, to the hundred year, isn't it? Which is a big storm, and and so it would be rare when those underground cisterns would be utilized to their full capacity. So, we we've, we've used those code provisions and and hopefully have that covered. I mean, well, that's good. I appreciate that. <laughs> I just know that that can happen because I see it when it gets really bad. It just sheet flows across. If we get a, a 500 year storm, no guarantees necessarily. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> we'll, we'll just come talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At this point, we'll take that one, right? <laughs> you could use that storm. <laughs> Related to the question about the, the fence line and how I'll handle that, it'll, it'll be graded such that that fence will transition, you know, appropriately to your property, and, and we'll make sure that it, it, it works. Yeah. You could write the boundary line and get rid of the fence. Okay. So I mean that that there's going to be some excavation there, and we're going to have to put that on footings, and then and then that will be covered, and then the 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 CMU will come up on top of that. So I I think. We'll, we, we, yeah, we'll, we're going to make sure it looks good over there. That, that 30 foot landscape buffer gives some flexibility in floating that grade to be able to match up to, to where you need to be. Yeah. We, we, we appreciate it because we came and looked with Mike yesterday with the plans, and that alleviated a lot of my concerns. And that, that first parking lot light is about 80 feet from our property line. Well, that's good. That was, that was a good design. Yeah. Well, and, and I think the fact that, again, that when we're 
usually the temple operates to you know 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then those little dim and go off, and it should be should be more manageable because of that too. The distance, the buffer, and the the management hopefully will be palatable. We're over there. And the phone metrics ready, I think, showed it's about 0.5 to 0.3 by the time it gets to my property. So. And, and I want to also clarify one other thing that I said earlier, and it was another question related to lighting about the temple, whether it goes off. It, it, it is going to be dimmed, the, the, even the temple lighting later in the night. So it'll be lit at one level, you know, during operations and in the later hours of the night, it'll be dimmed, though not completely turned off is our intent. Right now, the way we, the only way we have it designed is we've got those two entrances from the, well, three entrances from the north, and there's no other uh, the gates into the property. Uh, my name's Mark Davis. I actually have two or three questions. Um, I'm curious. Did you mention earlier? Is there is there a plaza on the east that you that is not on the plan per se or? Did I miss here? It's on the plan, Mark. It's just that it, it didn't, it doesn't show clearly like those plazas that are the oval plazas. I just wanted to make sure that, that Mike called that out. So it's, it shows. Just a small plaza. It, on yeah, it's side. just a smaller plaza. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then do you expect the, the grade where the building is, is it going to be about the same grade that's existing now or is it going to be up? It's, it will be raised. Uh, it's depressed right now, and, yeah. and so we want to set that grading so uh, water sheds and flows away from the building, and and uh, is all done via a gravity okay. drainage system. But it's a couple of feet. Our 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 goal is to try to balance the sites as much as possible. So it, it'll come up a little bit. We have some cut along the east, and I think we have a net. I think we have a net cut on the site. Yeah, it yeah. balances a after we. Quite well. Just a small net cut. Um, and then this is just more curiosity more than anything. It's probably too late, but I'm just curious if the Alpine School District is just too difficult. Why don't we have an easement <laughs> through? I, I, I'm well familiar with those fields, almost as familiar as Renee is. Um, and there's plenty of space there. I'm surprised they wouldn't allow some kind of, and maybe you guys do go for that. I don't know, but a 40 foot easement right away through in parallel with the trail as a driveway in from as a driveway 200 in. south that would head north oh, and take you into from, the temple oh. from a south yeah, entrance from the is what he's talking Linden's about 200 south well the reality is that we're actually working with them right now on a, a utility easement during uh, over that same section where the power is going to be running from the south on, on 200 south through their property and into ours but as far as a road um we never really asked for that access road with them, so I, don't, I wouldn't say this. The school has been unreasonable. It just was our intent to, to keep, just our our primary property as the okay. access. It seems a little more secure that way, just having an entrance from the and north. I guess the I I would, I don't know if there's a note for follow up or something, but I do feel like, uh, the canal trail, you know, the landscaping or the, the wild landscaping along there, could be an issue. Especially with you guys, you're going to have a, a see-through fence, right? Um, and you might want a masonry wall on that side. Uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a lot. I mean, there's just wild bushes and weeds, and you know, uh, I don't know. I don't. I'm, I'm not a. Well, no. Look, look, we're worried about that too. That's something that the mayor has brought up repeatedly in our earlier discussions with. <coughs> With uh, him, the city council brought it up when we talked with them a few weeks ago. Um, yeah, it's it's a you know you want to make sure you don't have a fire hazard there and you don't have a you don't have a aesthetics issue there. So you know this gentleman who works for the for the um, water entity has you know talked about that they're not not planning to do anything. We'll do all we can to try to make that look okay. But again, we, we also are sensitive. We can't take on landscaping for that slope, nor would they allow us to, So and put any, any elaborate landscaping there. So 
that maybe is a, a multi-party discussion to continue forward and, and, and come up with a, uh, a viable solution there. And, and again, we support that because we're definitely interested in maintaining the aesthetics of that hill as much as we can reasonably. And Mark, do you feel good about lighting and everything? His house is pretty much, his backyard is directly between the two um, spires. <laughs> and I'm like, does he have to get blackout shades or is he gonna be okay? <laughs> we're, we're not concerned whatsoever. And some of our neighbors are, I'm like, really, you guys are serious with this or not? But, I just think it's, I mean, to me, it's like a non-issue, but. Good. Um, Mark's a celebrity as a result of all this. Just don't back out because I just started a big uh, addition project. <laughs> so I just want to make sure that you guys are yeah. solid here. Yeah, we, we feel pretty solid. So. <laughs> hey, do we have any other questions from the public? If not, um, and if, if you don't have any other comments to make. If I could just make a couple of final sure. closing comments. Yeah. Uh -huh. I just say thank you for having us here tonight. We pre we're very appreciative of the reception that we've had in the community. We're grateful to be here. We hope that what we have designed uh, speaks to the community and is something that um, they value and uh, enjoy and, and find uh, happiness with. We really have made every effort to make the grounds beautiful, the temple design beautiful think about the local culture and, and um, it should be a, a lovely project for the community. So thank you for your consideration. We appreciate the questions. We appreciate the questions from the community members. We want to be good citizens. We want to be um, uh, a temple that is that everyone loves. So we'll look forward to moving forward if we can get a, a positive uh, affirmation from you tonight and we'll we're absolutely committed to continue to work well with the city and be good community members. Thank you. I'm sorry. I, 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 I would be here? remiss if I didn't ask. I forgot. Um, I got all nervous. Uh, assuming a positive uh, decision today, is there? Do we have a schedule or a projected like groundbreaking? <laughs> or anything? You knew you were going to be asked that. Well, didn't well you? here's what I can say about that. Um, the we. The, the church really tightly controls releasing timeline information about these temples. We'll, we'll of course, announce uh, the groundbreaking usually several months in advance of it. Um, I can't give you a, a committed date today. We're in design right now. We just, um, uh, we're well into, into the construction documents. We just finished the d design development submittal. That's 30%. So we've got the balance of the construction documents to put together. It takes a good, better part of a year to, to prep documents for a project this complex. So um, our intent as uh, an organization has been to start these projects as quickly as we can after they're announced. This project was announced in uh, October of uh, 20. So um, we're nearing the year mark towards this fall. I don't think we're going to be out of the ground by that year mark, but not too far after that, I would suspect. Now, one of the things you mentioned when I, I sat in on the discussion with city council and they did an overview is that this, this temple in the design is, is very unique. Um, I mean, it's, it's not like a lot of other temples. Do, do you want to just speak to that for a minute? Well, I guess what we can say about that is, is um, we have... As we have announced more and more temples, we've had to become more and more efficient in, in reusing floor plans and, and different designs, and we're trying to move more, more quickly and more economically with that. In this case, um, this the size of this temple is very similar in terms of its capacity as Orem, but we wanted to do a more unique uh, project here and not do the same project that was done in Orem. So this is a new custom design for this for this location, this is the first time this plan will be built. That's not to say it might not be built again somewhere else in the future, but it is the first time this plan will be built here. So it is unique in that way. Yeah, the double that. font, what, that's, that seems very unique. What prompted that here in the city of Linden? 
Well, that's a great question. We try to be very um, proactive in terms of our planning and uh, looking at looking at use and demographics and projections, and we try to be um, pragmatic about that, practical about it, as well as follow, you know, inspiration and direction from our leaders. And one of the things that we have uh, seen in a lot of our temple locations throughout the Wasatch Front, especially, is is a lot of use of the baptistries, and 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 sometimes that creates a lot of waiting for those for those patrons that come to the baptistry. And so, the church has has tried to, you know, address that. This is one way we've found to to address that. This is a community with, you know, a lot of a lot of faithful members of the church. We expect there will be a lot of youth that will come use this, and and uh, so we thought we'd try this. You said this was one of, of two that have the, the two baptistries. What other Syracuse is designed Syracuse. with two baptistries. Okay. Well, that's neat. <laughs> are, the, are the oxen going away with the angel Moroni? Or? <laughs> <laughs> you get any, get any oxen in the mix? <laughs> that's not, the not the plan. <laughs> Can we do some horses? Can we... <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to state that I'm a big fan of Moroni, but I'm all the Moroni, all the Moroni, I'm a big fan. But I'm glad it's not only Yeah. So one earthquake. It'll be beautiful. <laughs> It'll be beautiful. Um, we're going to go ahead um, with the motions. Yes, and the, the, there are three separate agenda right. items, and so you'll have to open each one. Open and, and close. Close yeah. each one. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll start with the conditional use permit. Um, do I have a motion for the conditional use permit with the with the conditions? I'll, I'll make the motion. Okay. I move that we approve the applicant's request for conditional use permit approved to operate a temple for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter Day Saints, located at 850 East Center Street with the following conditions. One, the monument sign and building signs are approved with the use of the building. And number two, all items of the staff report. Okay, I have, a, I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second that motion. Okay, motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. The next item will be the minor subdivision motion. I would just clarify this is item seven. This is item agenda. seven. Okay. Um, I'll make the motion. We, okay. I move to approve the applicant's request for a minor subdivision approval for the property located at 850 East Center Street with the following conditions, those one through five as read by staff and shown in the staff report. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. The voting is unanimous. Okay. Then uh, the next item on our agenda is item number eight on our agenda. This is the site plan motion. Um, do I have a motion? I'll make that motion. I move to approve the applicant's request for site approval for the property located at 850 East Center Street with the following conditions. The development will be, development be allowed a six foot ornamental fence which meets clear view requirements in the front setback. Number two, the overall height of the building includes two steeples which are approved at 224 feet. The applicant will continue to work with, city, with the city engineer to make all final corrections to the engineering documents. The plans will meet development specifications as found in the Linden City Development Manual and all items on the staff report. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. <laughs> Thank you very much. So we're pretty excited to have the temple coming and, and it'll be neat to hear a Groundbreaking time. <laughs> we know you can't get we, that. We will that keep didn't you posted. <laughs> <laughs> From a layman. 
uh -huh. in your landscaping plan, you called for London plane trees. They're in extreme distress in our region. You might want to relook at that. <laughs> Due to what? Yeah, thank Anthracnose. you. Like water. Anthracnose. Oh, I've got two. In They're my sure backyard. lovely trees, though, aren't they? <laughs> I have two in our backyard. <laughs> Need some linden those trees. Myself. That makes complete sense. Thank you, To the what? next oh. item on the agenda. <laughs> what I'm doing? I have to do something center statement. Okay. Oh, I said that wrong. This is five. The street master plan map. That's eight, isn't it? I said that wrong. Oh well. Okay. And um, the next item on our agenda is a public hearing, so we do need to open a public hearing. I moved, to open, a, I moved <laughs> to open a public hearing. I second that. Go ahead. Renee it's seconded it. It's okay. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. And this is a public hearing for a street master plan am map amendment at 267 South, 280 West. Our applicant is Joe Martell, and our presenting staff is Anders Bate. And I'll let you go ahead. And, and Joe, if you would like to come up to the front, or any others you'd like to come with you is fine. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so this application, it's a street master plan amendment. Um, the street, the general plan, street master plan has uh, the road 280 West um, connecting in our, in our master plan um, through the applicant's property um, at 267 South 280 West. Um, and the request is to remove that connection um, from the master plan. Um, the reason for this request is that uh, the applicant is um, requesting or is wanting to do a subdivision application, uh, a residential subdivision, um, and um, would like the, the layout of that subdivision to not include that street connection. Um, and I'll give some background um, kind of overview of, of this property. So in 1991, um, the applicant submitted a subdivision request for um, his property um, for two lot, a two lot subdivision that also included um, a preliminary um, uh, concept plan for the remainder of the applicant's property. Um, and th that, um, this is an image of that um, preliminary plan um, that shows the two lots that were um, approved as part of that subdivision and then um, additional lots um, on the remainder of the applicant's property um, and shows the, the street um, terminating in, in two cul-de-sacs from both the north and the south. Um, right, so yeah, so at, at the time, um, at 1991, when the um, Planning Commission reviewed this request, they discussed um, the street terminating with the two cul-de-sacs um, and determined that that would most likely be the best um, thing to do um, because of drainage issues on the property and also um, because of concerns with overloading um, this intersection at 200 South, 280 West, which has some um, site concerns with poor visibility and, and a slope going into that intersection. There's um, a pretty steep slope there. Um, and so that, at the time, um, there wasn't any uh, street connection on the, um, 
on the street master plan. Um, going forward about 10 years, in, in 2001, around 2001, the city decided with their street master plan to um, include uh, connections with local streets and they added um, the street connection um, on that plan um, to connect uh, 280 West um, from north to south through the applicant's property. Um, and it appears that at the time the city wasn't aware of, of this um, preliminary approval um, and the applicant wasn't aware that that connection was being made as well. Um, and so since um, 2001, that, that connection has stayed on the streets master plan until our, our current streets master plan today. Um, and so now the applicant um, is, would like to propose this um, layout. Con this is a concept plan of the layout they would like to propose, which is the same as um, or similar to what was previously um, done in, in 1991 um, that includes cul-de-sac in the street. And so in order for them to have this um, layout, that uh, street connection will now need to be removed from the street master plan. Um, so the applicant, if they receive a um, positive um, recommendation and then approval from the city council for this removal, this is most likely the, the plan that they would propose, um, but they would need to submit that um, subdivision application at a later time. Um, so in reviewing uh, gen um, street master plan amendments and, and street connectivity, um, the general plan um, provides some uh, direction um, that should be considered when making um, amendments to the, the street master plan and, and making that plan. Um, some things mentioned here are that um, so one, this first bullet point, the goal of the transportation plan is to have a balanced circulation system which provides for safe and efficient movement of vehicles and pedestrians, reinforces surrounding land development patterns and other city priorities and enhances regional circulation facilities. Um, oh, other bullet points, um, some things to note um, is that um, the plan should um, um, that the plan that st through streets are encouraged um, and let's see another thing I wanted to point out um, um, just that the plan should um, provide for safe and efficient movement of trucks and service vehicles within the community in a manner that does not adversely affect nearby land uses um, so these are some of the, the points from the, the general plan that should be considered with, with making this um, recommendation to the city council. Um, let's see. Um, so kind of going, uh, you can see kind of the surrounding area of this property. Um, this 280 west continues south into, into Orem. Um, and so that kind of creates a, um, a regional connection, which is another thing that's, um, that's discussed in the, in the general plan considerations and goals. Um, kind of a, you know, that, that there is that connection um, through 240 West and that this would, I guess, kind of create a, um, another connection there. Um, so uh, I'll go to the motion for this item. Okay, yeah, so um, our applicants provided, uh, Mr. Martel's provided a um, presentation with um, kind of some additional background information um, and I'll pull that up. Um, and then I'm happy to scroll through this as, as you direct me to. Sure, thank um, you. You actually yeah. covered most of the information, <laughs> so we can just kind of go through it. And really, the reason we're here is, um, you know, when we bought this parcel, there was nothing there. It was basically vacant ground. It was like uh, a, a few uh, Concord grapes. And over the years, we've, we've built it out to be our family farm. 
and now my kids want to move back in, and so that's why we're having to subdivide it out. So our intent really is to just develop the south three lots and maintain the rest of that as a family farm for you know, the next few decades at least, as, as long as me and my wife are around because kids want to do that. So that's why we're here pursuing that, and that was a surprise when we started pursuing the subdivision to notice that there was street in there because we'd never heard anything about that. Um, but um, so that, that's kind of, so you can kind of scroll ahead a little bit. We've already covered this, and that's pretty much what it looked like. Uh, we covered the Perlin uh, concept. And I just wanted to call out here that in, um, when this was brought to the Planning Commission back in 91, um, the motion was to accept that preliminary plan with the stipulation that the property be developed as a, as a cul-de-sac. It was specifically called out because of the safety concerns and drainage issues that, that, uh, um, that, that were mentioned. Uh, so you can kind of scroll ahead. Um, so we've put an orchard in. This is kind of what it looks like now. Um, we have about uh, 100, 120 fruit trees. We just started planting Christmas trees in there. And so it is our intent to kind of maintain as much of this as possible as the family farm. And that's why we're, that the cul-de-sac really works well. If we had to do through road, it really, um, it makes it just problematic. We end up losing so much in a temporary turnaround and things like that. And so, um, and we're a Utah local producer. We mentioned the street plan did not have it a through road until about 2001. Uh, there's a number of uh, intersection site concerns because 280 West, there were existing homes back there, so there was um, not proper setbacks for some of the homes. The retaining wall that's there on 200 South creates an uh, issue where you have to actually encroach into 200 South to see around it and to site up the hill. Um, so those site concerns are still there, and you know there's probably a lot more commercial traffic now than there was back then. So, um, and 240 West just up the street is a flat profile, intersection profile, has a lot better uh, flow to that. And so our request is to, um, you know, modify the, the plan to back to the two cul-de-sacs that were stipulated back in 91 so we can pursue our, our development. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So, yeah, I can go over the motion um, and then if, the commission have, has any questions uh, for me or the applicant, um, I'd be happy to go over those too. So, um, so that's just, um, so this is a recommendation to the city council. So to recommend approval, denial, denial or to continue ordinance um, 2021-15-0 to amend the Linden City General Plan Street Master Plan Map to remove the street connection of 280 West between um, 267 South, 280 West, and 364 South, 280 West. So I'll, uh, the commission has any questions or? Yeah. I, my question would be um, back in 2001 when they updated this master plan, um, what benefit was it to the city that, to have that road go through? Why did, why did they decide that they, and, and I scanned through those previous minutes, but why did they decide they wanted that street to go through? Um, so usually there's a reason. Yeah, we, we spoke with uh, uh, this engineer at the time, um, and, and their, um, Recollection was that was, Dave Thurgood or who was it you um, talked to? I, we, we talked to JUB, yeah, yeah Mark Dave Christensen. Was over there. And, yeah, and, and he, yeah, he was involved as well. And, and I guess their recollection was just uh, that they wanted, um, they kind of citywide put in um, street connections to local streets. Um, and so it was maybe not just for this area specifically, but just kind of a citywide, um, just trying to connect local streets. More of a they yeah. wanted more through streets is what they were looking for probably mm -hmm. at the time. So if, if this, I mean, if this didn't go through, you know, the way it's on the master plan, 
is that detrimental to the city in any way? Um, it, so are you, you're asking if, if, if you did approve to remove it from the, remove yeah. the street connection? Yeah. Um, I, I mean, that's just what, what I guess you'll have to evaluate, just you know, if that additional connection is necessary. There is right. already a connection on 240 West. Well, that's what I, it, it would, looked like. If there it would provide a kind of a more uh, direct. direct, yeah, exactly, connection from that, the road that does continue into Orem. Um, on 280 West, um, it would, so it would provide that regional connection. It, it would provide a through street, which is both encouraged on the um, general plan. But goals. there is a, a a through street that goes on 240 West and also and also 400, 400 North, West, yeah. 400 West, yeah, to, to 200 South. Yeah, so there are, yeah, it doesn't so it doesn't prevent any connection. That's okay. Yeah. Sharon, I have a question. Sure. Um, in the, in back in 1991, when they when they redid the zone, since this, they, this obviously affected his property, would notices have been sent out? How he he said he never knew about it. Would we have sent out notices? That, hey, this is going to affect his property. We better send out some notices. I would say probably not. I've seen it happen. I hate to say it, but that's not the first time <laughs> this has happened, and people <laughs> haven't been notified. I was actually attending meetings back in that. Same period of time, doing and a little bit of your property is on these well, on those and, roads. <laughs> and it, it wasn't intended to be a through street either. But but the point is is that it I recall for all the reasons that have been noted, then it would be even more severe now because the the walls got taller and the grade didn't improve when 200 South was redone there. To me, it's more dangerous today to think of pulling traffic off 1600 North and Orm and bringing it over there and dumping it on to 200 South with a direct shot. So, I mean, the same reasons that the city had the wisdom then to understanding the drainage and the situations, to me, they haven't changed. They've just got maybe even more severe if you've ever pulled off a 200 South right. to go back in there. I don't know if you could bring that up on Google Maps and just let us see that intersection. Yeah. I'm 90% sure I know exactly what you're talking about. That's where the old train trestles <laughs> yeah. were, and his properties where my neighbors used to poach deer and pheasants. <laughs> <laughs> Dang those neighbors. <laughs> but yeah, that's quite the retaining wall mm -hmm. that's there. Do a street, street, street view, view if you right can. There. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's see, that. that wall. Mm -hmm. And that wall wasn't there, was it? No. When you built. No. It was a I think it, slope. Yeah, I think it's it's hurt the visibility versus Down help it. That street. Yeah. 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 Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you can kind of see it. But you're pretty well on the intersection to be able to see. And it's just typically what our, our ordinance is for clear view is you go 40 feet in each direction and nothing higher than three feet um, in that triangle area for, for a clear view area. They obviously didn't do the calculation. No. <laughs> so, Mike. I'm trying to understand what you're saying on that as far as that 280 West going through or not. You don't maybe, maybe maybe the question yeah. is no. what are staff's recommendation? Um, I guess yeah, I was we, talking we, to you. We just see we see it both ways. We see the safety issues.
if it was a through street? Yeah. Don't you have the same safety issues if it's a cul-de-sac? You're only adding oh. a couple, maybe. You only have a few 30 houses. years from now, a couple of more homes coming out onto but it's 200 traffic. South. Yeah. Yeah. Still a safety issue. But it's, yeah, the well, same as it is now. Not as much. But as far as pulling people off 1600 right. North in Kempton and right. go over there to go to their chapel right up the street a block, yeah. you're going to avoid that problem. Yeah, I think I'm just concerned that, you know, once again, we've had in the past, we've had people come to us and say we want to disregard the master plan and we just have to have reasons for it and I think right. in this particular one there are pretty substantial reasons to justify it but I just don't want to just okay we just well, you know we and, do this and, and the else point is there were there were substantial reasons then and right. to me they haven't gone away today correct and it, you know and I know where there's a tendency to poke everything through if possible I mean for heaven's sakes we don't even have a center street that goes through yeah you know, because of poor planning. But this, I recall the meetings at the time, and to me, it's probably worse today than it was then to tell them to plan on two cul-de-sacs. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, any other comments from the commission? And then we're gonna, this is a public hearing. And so if anyone else from the public has a comment they'd like to make? Uh, Anyone? Just clarify here, right? So the plan would be to build on lots one, two, and three. The south cul de sac. The south cul de sac. And leave and then, the farm intact on the north. And then lots four through eight would still be the farm. Yes. And not even develop the cul de sac at Future, this point. That's correct. Yeah. For probably 20 or 30 years. You know, and frankly, that actually makes that a better situation to have a proper turnaround that doesn't exist there now. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was no, I don't understand why there were no provisions for the developer that did that to put a, a temporary turnaround in or make some provisions. It's on the plan, so I'm not sure why it didn't, it didn't get built. Yeah, to go to that thing, that was where the evidence is for that plan. It, it's right there on mm -hmm. the, the original plan. I'm not sure why it never got built. On the north side? No, but it's on it's it's somebody else's property, property there, Mike. That's oh, not okay. on the subdivision property to the yeah, south. But it still should have been, like, you know, like, like for example, uh, that Norton subdivision we did on the mayor's property for one lot, he still had to build uh, a third temporary turnaround in. Mm -hmm. Um, if there are no other comments from the public, uh, we're going to close the public hearing and bring it up here to the commission for, for discussion and to make a decision. Okay. Uh, do I have a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Do I have a second? I'll second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, is there any other discussion um, from the commission? Okay. I just agree with Commissioner Marchbanks. I think this situation, if anything, it warrants it more now than it did then. And, and I understand why they went through and put it on the master plan, you know, saw two roads that weren't connected, let's draw the line and connect them. But I don't see, especially with the road going up around it and stuff, I don't see any harm to the city. By mm -hmm. Recommending a change. A change in the master plan. And, and I agree with Scott that we have to be very careful in changing master plans. You know, um, you know there's all kinds of requests to do that. <laughs> So we have to evaluate it pretty carefully on whether we change master plans. Um, Absolutely, but we need to be more diligent, which I think we have been the last, right. you know, maybe 10 years or so in, in proper notification to people that are impacted by things. I, I agree. So. Okay. Um, any other comments? Are we ready for a motion on this? Ready for a motion. Okay, do you want to go ahead, Renee? Yes. Hold on, let me find it. 
I uh, move to approve, I move to recommend approval of ordinance 2021-15-0 to amend the Linden City General Plan Street Master Plan Map to remove the street connection of 280 West between 267 South, 280 West and 364 South, 280 West. Okay, I have a motion, do I have a second? I second that motion. Okay, motion and a second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. And I think that's really neat that you're planning to keep the farm. When I saw this, and, and I know you've had a orchard and farm down there, and when I saw this, I thought, oh, I hope they're not gonna just develop all of that property. Have people chase us for so, that. <laughs> have you? <laughs> I bet you have. But, but that's neat that you are keeping the, the, the farm Side. coming to be there and they want to work hard on those that grandkids farm. to work there you go. yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank good you luck very much. Mm, thank you okay okay all right and might just mention it is nice to have sean moon with us as uh, one of our candidates from <laughs> um, the next item on our agenda is item number nine, hills, and this is a hillside exemption or relief approval at 578 North 800 East. Our applicant is Mill Haven Construction, um, LLC, and Chase Williams. Is that? Okay. Oh, that's your client. Okay. And our presenting staff is Michael Florence. Nick, do you want to go ahead? All right. Thank you, yeah, commissioners. Come on up. So this property is located behind Citizenship Park there on the hillside. I think I'm grateful that, you know, I haven't been a part of these hillside lots for a, a long time, you know, just a few of them, but I'm glad we're down to about three or four left. So the, so the commission reviews any um, development on a hillside that is greater than 20%. So you have to, you'd have to approve this. Anyways, and then there's, um, they're also asking for two exceptions or exemptions from the hillside ordinance, which uh, is allowed within the code. So I'm gonna go through those real quick. So the, this, this property does have an average slope of greater than 20%, and so you will need to specifically give approval for the development. And then the two exemptions are, are, are the following. Um, well, let me go back real quick, you'll see, You'll see on this, this plan, there's an existing uh, asphalt road or driveway that, that comes up to this point here. And then there's a, there's a small hammerhead turnaround. So the applicant is proposing uh, to extend the driveway from that hammerhead turnaround uh, up the hill and to the, to the home here. The, now the ordinance says whenever there's a slope greater than uh, 30% or for, sorry 40% that you have to have a 50 foot setback between the slope and the 40% slope and the home. And so the applicant has, has highlighted that uh, 50 foot setback in the dotted line there. What they're proposing is, as an exemption to the ordinance is to allow the driveway to be located in that 50 foot um, setback area. The other exemption they're asking for is this is a slope analysis that is, the, our city engineer has overlaid the, the residence and the proper and the site plan over top of the slope analysis. You'll see this, this red area has a 30% slope. So they're asking for an exemption to locate the home on, on this uh, slope as well. Now this, this area here in green, that's, that's where a majority of the home will be built. Uh, years ago, uh, someone scraped the top of that hill to, to put a baseball diamond in a tennis court for their, um, for their family. And so it, it's been like that for a number of years. And so that's, that's where this residence for the majority of it would be constructed. Uh, elevations of the home, here, this is the front elevation. This would be facing the hillside, the, the back of the home. So this is where the 30% slope would be. 
uh, to be able to step down on that uh, to, to walk have a walkout basement area to have and slope out onto that 30 percent just go through my report really quick make sure I didn't miss anything so the the applicant has hired a uh, geotechnical engineer that's required is um, for part of the ordinance for to fulfill the requirements of the ordinance and the uh, engineer gave a number of recommendations so regarding the foundation the engineer gave uh, the below recommendations all topsoil organic soils undocumented fill loose or disturbed soils or any other deleterious materials should be removed from the building footprint prior to the replacement of foundations floor slabs or structural fill um, you can see the rest of these here um, and I'm not going to go through each one of those um, the earthwork recommendations uh, so you've got the different recommendations here and then the petitions of, of relief now the the structure or the, sorry the geotechnical engineer did note on here if, um, if I can find that Okay, so for, for both the 30% slope and the 50-foot uh, setback, the, the geotechnical engineer has said, based on our evaluation, it is our opinion that the proposed encroachment into the 50-foot setback and above it says 30-foot uh, 30, uh, 30 <coughs> uh, encroachment uh, will not adversely affect the site or neighboring properties. In addition, the small area of existing fill slopes steeper than 30% will be removed as part of the home construction and thus will not adversely affect the site or neighboring properties. So with that, the staff has given a number of um, conditions of approval uh, for this and that um, the site will be constructed as per the recommendations of the geotechnical engineer to mitigate the impacts of the proposal as found in the attached geotechnical reports. A sales report be submitted with building plans for review by the Linden City building official and all mitigation recommendations be implemented. The grading and drainage plan be constructed as approved by the city engineer. Prior to the building permit being issued, the city engineer and applicant will, re will resolve all technical engineering issues a subdivision plat be approved by the Planning Commission and that will be coming to you in two weeks for approval of the to consolidate those two parcels that's currently on the property into one. A final landscape plan be submitted and approved by Linden City staff that meets Title 17.57. The city not be liable or responsible for replacement or repair of the driveway if a storm event or debris flow causes damage to the driveway area crossing the drainage route for Citizenship Park and the development will meet all relevant building site requirements found in title 1757 which is our hillside ordinance and all items of the staff report now let me go to that um, condition number seven real quick so in 2007 this project was um, brought before the at that time i believe it was the city council that gave approval um, and they rec they they added this condition if you look at the aerial photo in this area right here, there, there's a culvert that goes out into the park. You'll see a bunch of gravel right here that's covered up by, the, by that line. And so the, that was a condition in 2007, and I, and I added that same condition that uh, the city not be held liable for any damages uh, because of debris flow through that area. So with that, um, myself and the applicants would be glad to answer any questions. Mike, because this was never recorded, doesn't it have to be brought before for a single lot subdivision again? It, it will, and so that so what you're proving tonight is just approval okay. of the hillside items, and then the exemption. The, exemption. this is a flag lot, also. Yep. Then on the yeah. yep, correct. The meeting on the twenty seventh, you'll approve the, okay. the subdivision. I didn't know if that or review the subdivision. Okay. I should say. Sounds good. So that's why I made that condition in the, in the ordinance. So, so the the this approval tonight, if you grant that, is conditioned upon the okay. subdivision in two weeks. All 
Um, so, so we're simple. So it's that same thing where the flow debris causes, in the, and just hypothetically speaking, in the future, say that something flows, that hill flows down over the over their new driveway. Mm -hmm. The city they can't the next owner can't come back to the city and say you approved this, and now there's debris all over this drive my driveway. Can get rid of it for this new owner. Yeah, yeah, the new owner is going to do it, but then when he sells the home, the next owner is going to come in and go, hey, look, you put this right. This exemption, mm -hmm. which then allowed something to flow over the top of it, what? But it is a private drive. It's right? a, is it a private? Yeah, I just want. I, I, that's I'm, I'm just saying. It we probably. we just don't want to have to be held liable for replacing correct the driveway. Correct. If there is a debris flow, because that's what that park is set up to be as a debris it's basin. Because we have a two car driveway. Right. So they're building at their own risk. Yeah, I, that, that's why I said I'd, I'd, I'd be great if that whole was not responsible for any flow onto that property because we're allowing them that exemption. We're allowing that exemption there. And so, well, but, and the, the whole point of the, the setback is really to keep somebody from building their building. You know, correct. Right, I Cor think. Absolutely, I, there, I, I see. Or there would be damage to a building, but in a lot of respects, landscape and driveways are subject to have things happen that need to be cleaned up or whatever yeah. at the homeowner's expense. Right. I, I agree. That's yeah. what it should be. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I'm not sure how to answer that. If, if legally we could say on the whole property, um, but I think that is, like Commissioner Marchbank said, they're responsible for that. Uh, where we have the culvert underneath the driveway right there. We, we don't want to be held responsible what for the driveway could, in that section. What we couldn't or wouldn't want to do is giving them the exemption to build their building where their driveway and Correct. landscape is. Okay. Uh, that would be Correct. idiotic on our part. Correct. When I look, went over and looked at this property, because <laughs> it's close to where I live, Okay, that is, to me, that seems like quite a feat to carve all that out of where that location is. My name, right? Todd Train with Millhaven. Um, can you pull up? So, so if you look at this picture, you can see in the red everything 40% or greater. Right. So that will be dedicated on the plat that you will see in two weeks as, as we will conserve that. It'll be a conservation area that won't no, be touched. No, no disruption of it. No disruption, no plantings, no waterings. It will remain natural. And it's a good chunk. It's about two acres of what he, he currently owns. Um, but if you look at the blue driveway, if you go up there, that's where kind of the access road is already. Um, and so that's why we're looking for the exemption is, is that's really how you get up on top of the only buildable area on the site. And so um, he, he is dedicating all of this area is unbuildable on the plat and just wanting to build the home on the one location that it is buildable. And then can you go, Mike, can you go to the next, the one with the slope analysis? And so the, the, red, the other reason we're asking for the exemption here on that little red piece is if you go up there, that is actual fill. Uh, when they graded this years ago, they made that steep slope. Mm -hmm. And so we just, I, I mean, we really would just like to get rid of that fill that they've placed there and and if you saw the the elevation view we're just using the foundation wall to just step it down like right. any walkout basement right. and so we feel like those two exemptions are, are are following the intent of the ordinance of keeping everything that's unbuildable and 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 conserve that steep area and just uh, build on the 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 flat areas of the of the lot so, um, if so do you feel like um, by not disturbing that slope that goes over 40%, do you feel like that that um, will protect that home from erosion or flooding or the, those it, kinds of things that may come down that hill? If you look just above the property to the, to the east, there are actually some homes just above it mm -hmm. on top of the hill. Mm -hmm. We are not building anything where the flow would come down that that ravine so um so this this is this yep. is the ball diamond yeah that is that's where we would be building and you can see the tennis court right there 
So the hillside that we're talking about, that 40%, right above it is those homes above it. But if you go to the north, the ravine where we would get debris coming down, we're not building anything there. It's going to remain natural. Um, we, we won't impact it. The driveway stays as is, and the culvert that, uh, that exists today will continue to function as is for, for the future. So we're, we're trying to follow the intent of the hillside ordinance as much as possible by staying away from slopes and leaving as much natural as possible and, and just disturbing where really has already been disturbed in the past. So. Where it's been graded and that yep. the yep. for baseball fields. And, and when we, we actually had some test pits dug and there's not, because my big fear was that there was gonna be a lot of fill, like th that thing got <laughs> filled up and flattened, but it actually just got pushed cut. off. Got cut. Yeah, it just got cut and the test pit showed that we got to natural grade within five to seven feet. Hmm. So like, we'll be able to be on natural grade. So natural soil meaning it's not collapsibles, it's not, and, it's not and, filled. And wherever it's there might filled. be something that it goes deeper, they'll take their footing of the foundation down to good solid right. dirt. It may be eight feet of foundation under the basement floor. I mean, they'll do what they need to do to and that was some of the and recommendations on that to, geotechnical yeah. study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And just to speak to your comment about it being a, a cut in, like actually where the home is, it's not a cut. Like we're two feet above where the existing ball field is, is where that top of foundation would be. Okay. And so it's it's really just taking advantage of what they have there. And, and like I thought the same thing as you did when I first went up there and I was like, man, this is it's kind of crazy. And then I got up on top and I'm like, this is awesome. Like, this is really an cool. amazing view. Yeah, so Mike, can you zoom in on actually where the, um, where the home will actually be built? Do you want me to go to the Google Maps? Let me see the home outline there. So it, it'll go in right here on this ball diamond. Okay. So you, and you can see that uh, what Mr. Train was talking about, how they've got this little dirt driveway here that to get up on top of the property, that, that driveway will follow that dirt dirt path they've cut in there. Our proposed driveway will follow that. And then you can see the kind of shaded area north of the ball field. That's where the 30% that was created from them cutting that out and creating that slope. And so those are the two man-made uh, facilities out there that we're just... We're yeah. just trying to do the same thing. Yes. So when you follow that road up behind the park, so it it actually is is quite a way south of the park then, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. And that road, and I'll get into this in two weeks, but th this will be um, widened to 20 feet. The hammerhead turnaround here um, is widened, I believe, We're as well. We're moving it back and, and building it to be a substantial hammerhead because we met out there with the fire uh, team from the chief and and kind of went over all that with him. So that it, continue it'll continue to be a private road. Yes. Yeah, private driveway. It's going to have a dandy fun. time like bringing the... Is the hammerhead <laughs> moving... <laughs> is the hammerhead moving south? Just a teeny bit. Yes. yes. Yeah. Well, so you said um, the owner actually, I mean, in our staff report, he owns 4.47 acres but several of acres of that is really unusable 1.74 is that right yeah 1.74 acres is what's being dedicated in red so that you'll you'll see the flat next week and you'll see what that area is so that's the area that by ordinance two, we can't two do weeks. anything in mm -hmm. like we can't water it we can't right. plant anything in it we can't do anything with it which everybody knows and it's fine why would he purchase that all of that in addition to well, space. space. Yeah, space. I mean, space. he's still got two acres to build yeah. A, yeah. his home on. He probably didn't pay much for the unusable stuff. Right up to, you know, you can walk right up to the trail system. Yeah, up there. It's okay, cool. okay. So there was an existing, so like you can see there's an existing corral that was there for a long time. Right. Um, so they've, there's, it, all we're doing, like Todd said, is we're just trying to utilize the spaces that have already been used and that got created in the past by you know people just doing what they wanted to do on there so mm -hmm. you have to remove the tennis pad or we, yeah a portion of it yeah. will come out yes yeah we are yeah. dedicated as a city well, there's no there's no home up there or anything 
Well, there's not, yeah, a, there's not a home. Like, I, I don't know the backstory on where this person lives. <laughs> Trent Milhoff, I think, is was the guy who... That would make sense, because the, the Milhoff... He was in the that cul-de-sac. Yeah. Not that one, but the one to the south of it. He wanted it for his own park? Actually, the one, I think, the one to the west. Or was it one to this the one? south? This one? That was, one of, it was anyway. one of those. Dan Rock is the one who sold it. He lives on that yeah. right off of 8th, 7th and Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and then there's Van Morahan next to the park. Dan bought that, I think, from Trent Melhoff, who lived in that cul-de-sac right there. So, so yeah, there, there was a plat done in 2007 that was approved. Why they didn't record it, I don't know. But oh. we're, we're, we're back. It was approved, just never recorded. This thing has just come back a number of times, as I understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's been, it's, it's a challenging lot to build on, but just the private drive, I mean, you, you're bringing sewer. Yeah. You to the tour, right? Yeah. So yeah. you bring and a sewer, water, water, you're bringing all that clear. I mean, that's yeah, there's a current separate. easement through the park. Yeah. Oh, there is. So, yes. Okay. So, yeah, we're, we're bringing it up through the park on that, through that easement, but it's still a lot of still stuff to do, right? And, and it's, it's, not for the, it's not for the timid of yeah. cost yes. control. <laughs> <laughs> we, we enjoy building, like, really unique properties Very and things like that. Very expensive, too. <laughs> Uh, what size Williams home really is this? Uh, how large is the home? The square um, footage? It's, I think it's 14,000 square feet, but that mm -hmm. includes its sport court and things like that. So it's got a basement, main level, and then an upper And a store. pool? They're going to have a pool? They will have a yeah. pool in the back. Wow. So. Which, according to our ordinance, you'll have to approve as well. <laughs> yeah. Is this on mm -hmm. your side? But I mean, fantastic views. No, it's, Come on, it's incredible. I mean, it's it's worth the effort. Yeah, and sometimes, and you know, I'm not gonna lie. Like, there's a lot of things on this. Yeah. That you kind of when you're not standing on the property, you're like, man, is this worth it? And then you go stand on the property, and you're like, yes, it is. Yeah, cool. You That's can fun. see these utility lines right in here that will go through the park. That they, that'll follow their current easement they have. So I think the main thing to, you know, just to make sure is on the record that there's per, a professional opinion by a geotechnical right. engineer that, that um, he's confirmed that through his testing of the site that this will be safe uh, um, in the areas they're asking for the exemptions and building on this, this uh, sloped area. And I scanned through those, all those reports. So I mostly read their conclusions because mm -hmm. <laughs> they were pretty lengthy. Um, and, and I guess that's what makes me feel better about it is just that all those, uh, all that testing has been done. Mike, a few, a few months ago, I don't remember all the details, we had this hillside ordinance come up with the home that's going up to the north of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He needed to excavate mm -hmm. that because he needed 50 feet between yes. the back of his house, right? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure we're applying it fairly. Yep, he ha he didn't season. have that fifty foot net, and he works for Millhaven as well, no, I believe. Is that right, Brandon Jones? That was the Jones? big had the power pole in it. Uh, he didn't work for. Him. Oh, I thought he did. Oh, okay. He is a contractor, if I recall. Oh, I don't yeah. remember okay. there's any connection with Millhaven, but no. Mm -mm. So, okay, let's do it. And that that one is amazing. Uh, I just commented Mike there with the two power poles that will stay there. Right. <laughs> and yeah, there's actually the power poles that run all the way through here, and there's some <clears throat> really nice subdivisions that we built homes in, and they'll just go right through, and everybody's happy. And they, they're kind of up so high, it's out, it's out of sight, out of they mind. You can see yeah. beyond them. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it's just light on mm -hmm. that whole east bank. <laughs> Well, are, are there any other questions um, for the, I have for the applicants? A, I have a question, and I know my, I've asked this to Mike, and, and the, I guess there is a city ordinance that requires uh, water per acre. You know, uh, North Union is one share per acre of North Union water when you develop, and to my understanding, that is required for irrigation purposes. Um, in this case, where we've got a hillside zone where there's, that's an ordinance as well or that limits what we can actually develop or even touch or use, which in this case is 1.74 acres. Um, I've asked uh, 
Mike, if, if there was gonna be some consideration as far as what water would be required, are we gonna be required to do it on all four and a half acres? Or do we get to say, well, this is, we're not, we, we are actually required to not do anything with this and we can't sprinkle it, we can't irrigate it. It would make sense to me that what the water that's required would only be required on that usable, or not even usable, because 50 feet of that is a buffer zone, but we're just saying the 40% up. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm just thinking that makes sense to me to, to only require water on that space that's, that's specifically not uh, in that zone that, or in that area that you cannot irrigate, basically. Mike, isn't that technically how we calculate how many shares need to be turned into the city? We take the roads out. No, we take we, don't. we take the, the acreage of the property. Yeah. Including the roads. Yes. Yeah. But you could lot that as two lots long. Right? Yeah. And one would be landlocked. But so what? But I, I think that's like kind of a, in my opinion, that would be a worse situation than just granting an exception that we could require or that we bring enough water for that area and not for this hillside that we're not supposed to. Well, I, I guess the question would be, is there an exception to that rule? If there's no exception to so that So there's rule, not an exception the planning commission can give. So right. we, we would have to work through. It, it's the exact same question. If you read the minutes from 2007, the exact same question was brought up. And so we can discuss it with the city engineer, um, but that's not something the commission would be reviewing. Who decides that? It's just hard because you have two ordinances working against each other. You have one ordinance saying that do not sprinkle this yeah. entire area of your lot. And then you have another ordinance that says, but we want your water for this entire piece of your lot. And so it's just two pieces of ordinance that are working against each other. Can, can, can that be dealt with in DRC, though? Because so I've, if I've not... So Besides Mr. Ackley addressing this question um, recently, I don't have any other experience in it, so we'll have to figure that out. Yeah. We'll have to work with the city, city engineer and, and determine that. And, and that's that was my first thought, is that's not something the Planning Commission would do anything with. Correct. So, reasonable. Yeah. Well, I'm not sure it does. I, I experienced <laughs> the very same thing. I live on a five-acre parcel, okay. and I, had to, I divided it into two parcels. And so you turn in the water for the one parcel that you're gonna have your home on, you're gonna irrigate, and the other one you don't. And there's two advantages. One, you don't turn in the water unless you develop it. And the other which thing- Which you can't is, do. Which you can't do. Right. And the other thing is, when it comes to taxes, you're not taxed at the same high rate that your home's on. You're taxed at a, at a different rate, which is advantage. You might want to look into that just mm -hmm. to see if that's how it counts out because that that's possible. Well, once again, we would be doing a two-lot subdivision, really. You'd be doing a lot of all of the 40%. Oh, well, you'd be doing a one-lot subdivision, and then you'd have another parcel that's not a subdivision. It's, it's just undeveloped. Land. You're saying leave it right out of the is one. That, is that doable? Yeah, is that doable? I don't know. I, I think we... The, this. <laughs> I don't think so. Sounds good to me. <laughs> it may have been all right when Rob did it, but um, years ago. But under the under our current ordinances, you'd need to subdivide the property. So okay. Well, we're gonna. You'd have to we're not gonna it. it makes a lot of sense that you wouldn't turn in water for something you're restricted from watering. Right. Well, the engineers, they, they've got a whole assessment of that. They're, they're, they're the ones that'll figure that out. Yeah. Okay, well, we're not gonna, we're not gonna okay. deal with that I, right I now. I didn't know it. So, <laughs> I know that. Okay, um, we'll let you work that out with city okay. staff. Perfect. Um, and if there isn't any other discussion or concerns, um, we're gonna go ahead with a motion. Um, do I have someone that would like to make a motion? How about Mike Marchman's? <laughs> Get back to it, okie doke. Uh, I'd make the motion that the uh, Planning Commission, uh, relying upon the submitted information from professional engineers, finds that.
granting the request for development and exemption or relief will not be injurious to the health, safety, and welfare of the general public or nearby residents, will not create an undue hazard to property and improvements, and will be consistent with the purpose of this chapter identified in section 1757, and therefore we move to approve uh, the applicant's request to develop the property at 578 North 800 East, parcel number 14, colon zero, zero 074. I, I left my real <laughs> reader glasses out in the car. 1404. Anyway, the, 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 the attached number. Sidwell numbers <laughs> in accordance to with the hillside protection requirement of Title 17.57 and also approved of the hillside exemption or relief items identified in the staff report with the following conditions. And there are uh, nine conditions noted in our report. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know you had to put glasses. <laughs> they got readers in the bottom, but they're <laughs> kind of difficult. Okay. We have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second that. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. And that is going to be so interesting. Well, we've got to approve the subdivision yeah. first, but that's going to be we'll so we'll interesting to see how that works. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they get timid, we'll see them in six weeks. <laughs> yeah, good luck. Okay, thank you. And, and we welcome Sean earlier, and welcome to Carolyn, too, from City Council. <laughs> and, a, and another mayor candidate. <laughs> okay, we're going to go on with the next item on our agenda, but I've got to get past all of these reports. And, and real quick, Commissioners, I know we've been here two and a half hours, so um, if you feel like we want to... this, I think the reception ordinance reception center ordinance can be quick if you want to push the accessory apartment ordinance off we, we can do that for another two weeks um we just the, with the accessory apartment ordinance we do have to have something adopted by the first of october okay. so what are what are your thoughts on that do you want to go ahead with both or do you want to is Wait, there a time um, limit on the 27th since we're adding the 27th? I don't 27th? care, but I'm slipping out for a second. Okay, does anyone need a break? The 27th to add one of these yeah. items? But we've got three agenda items for the 27th right now, um, but we, we could split this up and do the accessory apartment on the 27th and do the reception one tonight. I'll make a motion we do that. Agreed. Okay. Second, third, fourth, whatever. Okay. Just if you can, make sure you look over it in the next couple of weeks. So. Can review you that and submit that to us on the next. I will. Okay. I will resubmit on the it, next agenda on the twenty seventh. Yep. Okay. Okay. We'll wait just a minute for people to get back. <laughs> so, on that accessory <laughs> ordinance, I mean, actually, it's just reviewing the. The changes that are going to need to be made to our ordinance, isn't it? You have to be compliant with the, by the state with the right. mandates from the state. Yeah. Right. So how how long would that actually take us if we went ahead with both? I mean, I can I, I can it, rush through it in five minutes. Okay. So I mean, we don't we don't want to rush, but basically, it's just what our ordinance is going to have to. Sure be updated to at this point comply I, I mean my thoughts are you let's just go ahead and get it done but, you only but I'll I mean it would be nice to get a summary yeah. 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 a summary of, of those state law requirements right at least for me it would help to have a instead of me reading it and trying to interpret it To me, it's. Well, I mean, I reviewed it, but it, to me, it's pretty straightforward as far as what we need to do. Did you hear that? We want to just go ahead and get the.
accessory equipment yeah, yeah. being done because you just have to go through what oh, excuse. the state is mandating. Mm -hmm. Because they're not they're not things that are going to take a long time. Hey, did you guys get things done? I almost swapped out your cookie while you were gone. <laughs> we're going to go need it anyway. <laughs> if you're okay with it, it, because neither one of these ordinances are going to take a, a long time. Either item, so let's just tell them. Yeah, well, let's just go. We just want to go ahead and get well, it done. Well, and I guess, Mike, when is the city council meeting? Until, um, I, I wouldn't bring it to him until like the August when is it, 16th. It doesn't, matter. It doesn't matter that way. No, but let's just get it done. And we've already reviewed it. We're prepared. But I won't be here the next <coughs> meeting unless you have it before the second knee replacement. <laughs> oh. Okay, then the next item on our agenda, let's go ahead, okay? <laughs> The next item on our agenda, this is a public hearing, so we do, do need to open the public hearing. So moved. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, um, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, this is uh, for ordinance amendment, the Linden City Standard Land Use Table. Our applicants, Linden City and, and Michael. Lawrence will be so I can I can be quick on this one. If you remember from the last meeting, we discussed, uh, you know, could we what uh, we discussed accommodating reception centers within that 500 foot buffer if they were all indoors, and so we we added the below the language at the bottom here that says uh, indoor only event centers can locate within the 500 foot separation distance where no outdoor gathering or event space is provided. So. So if, you're, if you have outdoor space, event space, or gathering areas, then you would have to meet that 500 foot buffer requirement. If um, we're, we're changing the parking to 50 square feet, um, one stall for every 50 square feet of floor space. But then if you're an indoor only, you can go within that 500 foot buffer. What was this parking before, Mike? Just remind me. It's one. B something. Four or something? It is. I've got, I've got I mean, it. What what factor does this increase it by? Um, or was is it a whole different? It's a whole different way we're calculating. It's currently one parking space for every four Double or person occupancy. capacity. Okay. So this, you know, we, we've been going off a 6,000 square foot building. This would increase by about 50 stalls from what, so from what was required under that other. And how many stalls were ones. required roughly before? Uh, it was about 75, I believe. So almost double, but not yeah. quite. Okay, that's that's what I just yeah. got. Give yeah. me an idea. Hopefully, double will be adequate. Yeah. Okay. Discussion on these changes. Um, as far as mostly what what. Mike's done is added that if it's indoor, they can be within the 500 uh, foot buffer. Mm -hmm. yeah. That, that um, makes me feel much better because before it was, we were kind of eliminating reception centers, yeah. mm -hmm. period. And then I asked the question to Mike earlier as far as the commercial farm zone and, um, you know, why it doesn't apply to that. And, and that's because they're, they're their own separate Zone ordinance. Yep. Yep. Ordinance. Yep. Okay. Um, is there any other discussion or concerns? Okay, this is a public hearing. If either of you have comments <laughs> from the public. <laughs> okay. Um, let's close the public hearing then. So moved. Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, and the next item on our agenda. Well, I have um, to vote on I'm it. ready to make a motion on that. Okay, okay, sorry. I'm trying to hurry too fast, aren't I? <laughs> I move to recommend to approve ordinance amendment 2021-5-0 as presented. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. 
Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, and the next item on our agenda is also an ordinance amendment. Here, let me get to that. Okay. And, and <coughs> so this is a this is a public hearing also. <coughs> so we need to reopen to open the public hearing. So moved. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, and our applicant, this is an ordinance amendment for the accessory apartments. And our applicant is London City. Our presenting staff is Michael Florence. Great. So um, this past legislative session, the state legislature uh, mandated um, with House Bill 82 that cities allow internal accessory dwelling units. Uh, those are permitted uh, by right, uh, ex except for a few exceptions I'll go through uh, in a couple minutes. So. Um, we, we were given that by the state legislature this year. Uh, the hope was from the legislature that this would help um, offset some affordable housing uh, needs with, within the state of Utah. I'm, I'm going to go through, I added this as an attachment to your staff report. It's from the League of City, Utah League of Cities and Towns. They basically set, gave you a summary of 10 items. So it, it makes inter internal as accessory dwelling units permitted in all residential zones, uh, then the cities have an option to prohibit in 25% of primarily residential zones, and then all, also on lots less than 6,000 square feet. So we, we've done that with a map uh, that uh, is in your staff report. Changes definition of single family limit, it strikes the word unrelated. Um, adds new definition to the LUDMA stands for the Land Use Development Management Act, so that's the state code for zoning. Um, it adds this definition of internal accessory dwelling unit. It prohibits regulations of internal accessory dwelling units on the size, so right now our ordinance says you have to have a minimum size of 300 square feet, so it, it prohibits us from having that minimum 300 foot square foot uh, requirement. Minimum lot frontage, it, it, limit, it prohibits cities having those. Minimum lot size except for lots smaller than 6,000 square feet. So any lot in Linden under this draft that I have before you, less than 6,000 square feet, we, we've prohibited uh, accessory apartments, internal accessory apartments. Uh, let's see, we're only, we're only allowed to require one parking space. So under our current code, we require two. The state says we can only require one for an internal accessory dwelling unit. The current ordinance says there can be no change, or the, the state law says there can be no change to exterior appearance of the home. Now under our ordinance, we say that you can't have a door on the front facade for the accessory apartment. As Brian and I have looked at that, we, we need to get rid of that. Um, because in another House bill that was passed, House Bill 98, it says that cities cannot have design standards for single-family homes. And so we feel, and it calls out, it lists a number of items that it calls as, as design standards, and, and a door is one of those. And so we have taken that also out of the accessory apartment ordinance. Let's see, allows recording notice of an internal accessory dwelling unit on the property. So right now we, we require an affidavit to be, be signed and notarized by the homeowner that they will live there, that they will, um, that they will only rent the accessory dwelling unit for a certain amount or less uh, to try and support a, affordable housing in the community. What is that amount? I want to say it was around eleven $1 hundred dollars or less. Well, uh, isn't it true that they, these new ADUs they removed it from the from the calculation of what our moderate income housing requirements are? So they removed it from one of the. Tw remember, the, two years ago they had all the strategies, the 
23 strategies for affordable housing. We had to pick three of those, and we picked one of those as, a, as accessory apartments. Well, they've removed that out of the, one of the 23 strat strategies since they're now mandating it in all communities. So that uh, it doesn't count anymore for us. Count anymore. It doesn't count anymore for us. So we're taking the affidavit it's requirement It's kind of bad out. when the city's yeah. designed the whole program around yeah. <laughs> accessory apartments. Yeah. So we, we've taken the affidavit requirement out, but w the state has allowed for a noticing requirement to be recorded on the property that they have an accessory apartment and it needs to be owner occupied. Um, and so w w in the ordinance, we're, we're putting that noticing requirement on. So we can still require. And we'll pro you can prohibit short term rentals from those if you want. Now we're, we need to have that discussion if we want to prohibit short-term rentals that, in accessory apartments. Would that be your Airbnbs? Or, yes. And mm -hmm. so the city the city could prohibit those? It could. We we're not being overran by access, by short-term rentals right now, but we, we are, I have drafted an ordinance that uh, we'll bring to the Planning Commission and Council at a future date for short-term rentals. But with this new these new mandates from the state, we're okay with doing that if we choose to? Yes. Yep. Okay. So the, the state mandate still requires it be owner occupied? Yes. Mm -hmm. they, they, they family came, occupied. Or? They came up with a new definition called primarily residential that it defines that as being owner occupied, being a single detached single family home that's owner occupied. Okay. Let's see. It establishes a separate process for internal accessory dwelling unit notice of violation appeals. They've put in a whole enforcement section in state code if you want to follow, if you want to uh, enforce uh, someone that is maybe illegally renting it as a duplex or something. Um, it changes egress window requirements for bedrooms so, so you uh, could require an upgrade so that there's proper egress to get out of a basement apartment. Uh, makes it state construction code changes to internal accessory dwelling units. So before we would require a furnace, uh, separate furnaces in the accessory dwelling unit and the, and the home. State law has done away with that. You can use the same, in, um, the same ducting between the two units. Now our building official, you know, he, he will give a recommendation that he hopes people will still consider putting two furnaces in just because, you know, for example, you can share, you know, diseases or whatever, or, or viruses, not diseases, but viruses between units through your duct systems and things. So his recommendation, but that's only going to be a rec. But that uh, was a particularly a expensive requirement it is. in a lot of different cities to, yes. to meet. And a lot of people were just doing baseboard heat because it's not a separate allowed. furnace, it's a separate heat source. Yes. And, and the baseboards are allowed, yeah. So, yeah. And if you only have one heating and air conditioning, then you yeah. roast upstairs and freeze downstairs. <laughs> oh, the less, the less it's set up like churches are yeah. with zones. And yeah. Yeah, you'd have yeah. to set it up with, with zones. I mean, when we, my wife and I first got married, you know, everybody up, the people upstairs controlled everything, so we right. froze to death downstairs. That's what I'm talking about. They'll have yeah. to figure that out. Um, and then it prescribes that homeowners associations cannot prohibit internal accessory dwelling units. So, really interesting. Oh, wow. That's a pretty powerful. That's, that's uh, serious. Yeah. That's a yeah. lot of overreach. Yeah. So, um, so we've made those changes. Departments, but that's a pretty big mandate. So we've made those changes in our ordinance. We're going to adopt. We're going to um, remove our our uh, definition of accessory dwelling unit and adopt the state definition of accessory dwelling unit, adopt internal accessory dwelling unit definition by reference to state code. Um, same with primary dwelling unit, ad adopt that uh, same definition by state, uh, as a reference to state code. What we have done is these requirements, we went in and changed that they'll be applicable to the internal accessory dwelling units but for detached accessory dwelling units, we're keeping the same requirements that are currently required in our code. So it's two parking stalls. Um, and we can do that. We can us. do that. Yes. Now I'm, I'm hearing that the state legislature, that's on their radar next year, is to go after <coughs> detached accessory apartments. But we'll, we'll see what they, what 
they do. In, in, in here, it, all, it mentions that um, there's an exception for Anderson Farms and Fieldstone. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, is that, how are we justifying that? Does state law allow us just to? So you can just, you can take 25% of your community and restrict accessory apartments in okay. those areas. Okay. And so currently we don't allow, our current code says we don't allow accessory apartments in those two areas, in those two developments. And so we're keeping with that. So these these areas here, we, this a map would be adopted with the, with the ordinance amendment. So we're, we're, we'll continue to restrict accessory apartments in those, in those uh, areas. So that only equals 6.3 uh, okay. percent oh. of our 20 of our allowable 25 percent okay but college towns can go up to 67 percent yeah so Provo Orem they could really really restrict that yeah if, if they want to if they want to I don't know if they do we still have the college of massage therapy here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that'll count the, the other the other thing we would prohibit on lots 6,000 square feet or less, uh, accessory apartments is allowed uh, by For state law. code. Yeah. Mm -hmm. does that, does that in Fieldstone and, and Anderson Farms, I mean, some of the homes are on 6,000, but there there are lots in this, of... And this, remember, this only applies to detached homes, so this does not okay. apply for... Um, you know, for example, in this area where the twin homes are, yeah. we've you know that 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 won't apply in the in this hashed area because it's not a, they're not detached. Oh, okay. 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 How does the 25% work? I mean, if it's under 6,000, that doesn't count against the 25%, right? It doesn't, no. So any of these other, we can have 25% plus this other. Yeah. So like even in field, or like down there in Ivory, a lot of those are smaller. So is that in your calculation? It, it is. Okay. Yeah, so we, we took the, if you look at that top box, we took the total acreage in Linden City. Here's your 25% is 520 acres. Those two development areas are 132 acres, which are only 6.3%. 6 right, but I guess what I'm saying is that 132 acres, maybe half of that aren't eligible anyway. Yeah. So mm -hmm. You're right. could we cut that 132 in half? We'd have not to that go, it matters. We'd have to we're, go not, to, we're, not, yeah. we're not hitting the 25%. Not, yeah. I mean, we could go through it a really quick and determine which are all less than 6,000 square feet, uh, but it's, it's, it, it I think it's just right easier to show on a map. And, and there's no feeling at the city council or that we're going to increase that amount to, to, to cap out at 25%, right? We're not looking to... I have not had that discussion with the council yet. It's of no value for us to go as high as we we're can because it, it doesn't go against our, it doesn't go against our moderate income maybe. housing. I like the idea right. so what's our motivation to go higher? We wouldn't have it down there in some of the blocks. And I think, you know, one of the other reasons, you know, with, with Anderson Farms and Phil Stone, the, the roads aren't as wide as, as the other streets. The, the lots are more narrow. They're not the 100 feet of frontage. And so, you know, you don't have as much parking, uh, you know, if it was to overflow into the street. You don't, you don't, the driveways aren't as big. So. So, Mike, I had a question. Maybe I misunderstood. Is if there's a cap that Linden puts on the rent? We currently do, yes. Um, you can only charge, so under our current ordinance, we say you can only rent for 80% of the area median income, which your 80% gets you into the affordable housing range. Who, who monitors that? Go ahead. I, I think so. I, 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 it, I I'd have to look. I, I guess I'm just having two kids getting married this summer. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know how that's even being enforced or anything because housing is yeah. crazy right it's now. It's not being enforced. Yeah. Accessory apartments aren't even registered. Well, I know yeah. it's already registered, but, you know, I mean, a standard for a college kid's a $1,000 for a one-bedroom apartment for, you know, I mean, that that's... Yeah, three guys are yeah. Well, isn't it isn't it correct to assume that that or, that language was based on the fact that it was part of our 
moderate income that's housing. What we that's were, why we did it. So is it really applicable now that it's no longer part of no, our No, we're taking that out. See, we, we've, oh, you stru are, we, we've, we've struck, struck that out okay, right good. here. Okay. So, so that's going away. So that's why. Okay, I was that's, say, that makes sense. Because it seems like we can't. No, that's what I meant. We're, we're taking out the affidavit requirement okay. that you will be owner-occupied and only rent to for 80% or less of the AMI. So that's going away. So we're taking that out and just replacing it with the state noticing requirements that we'll note, we'll, 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 uh, we will record a notice on your property saying that it needs to be owner occupied, that there's an accessory apartment there. Okay, the other thing that I think you were saying before, it didn't our ordinance before say something like the accessory apartment had to be smaller than the regular living space or something but now that that can't be right i mean it can it's be. only it only said that it had to be a minimum 300 square okay. feet but it can be it could be flopped right i guess mean, it could be the owners want to live the owner could live in 300 square feet apartment and rent yeah. out the top. Mm -hmm. yeah anders brings up a good point we we also had a in there that we're keeping this for the detached, that it says there's a maximum of three bedrooms, but we're removing that from the internal. So that's where it was. It was the maximum of three bedrooms. Okay. Yeah, but we are still keeping that for detached. Okay. Okay, do we have any discussion from public? We'll go ahead and close the public hearing unless either of you have comments to make. with what they're doing. So the state felt like they had to come in and they're trying to compete with the federal government. Right, I said overreach. <laughs> We're done with it. Can we push back, Mike? What's going on? This Can we one, say no? <laughs> this one's adopted, but, but this, this is one mandated is by the legislature. But there, you know, uh, and I'll share with you as well. Adam sent a, a memo from the city manager from Bountiful today about this housing. Um, Good. About well, what's expected in the next legislative legislative session and what's being pushed by a lot of the developers and housing groups, and so I'll, I'll share that with you guys as well. You yeah, know, that'd be so. nice. Well, it's, and I think they're, yeah. they're looking at this as trying to meet a need for affordable housing. Which in, I in think the state. does. I like the accessory apartments as a solution for affordable but housing. But we're a city that allows right. them by right anyways. Yeah, as long but, as it doesn't infringe on everybody around them. And that's they've taken away all our abilities, all the safety and protections and protocols to yeah. Right, they're against them. They're going down to some minutia and mandating, hey, you can't charge more than this, and you can't yeah. do. You know, it's like because someone may have three cars, but we can only say you right. can only have one parking stall. Yeah, I have two. Yeah, yeah. So, um, well, let's close the public hearing unless you have anything else, and then we'll bring it up to here for discussion and decide what we're going to do. I don't know that we have a choice on what we're going to do. No, <laughs> I move to close the public. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, the voting is unanimous. Okay, do we have any other discussion with the commission? You're, you can think about this for another two weeks and bring it back on the 27th or you know you're welcome to make a motion tonight to the council as a recommendation well i yeah. don't i don't really know what choices we have i mean it, it's been it given to us what we have to do and and so all you're doing is just uh, plugging in and implementing what the legislature has has given to the cities yeah and if we, if we don't have it adopted our changes by august 1st it goes into effect anyways Oh, brother. Right. So we could so really, we could move, we could say we're going to approve it, but we all vote no. 
But it doesn't. It'll doesn't go in make there. Any yeah. difference. Yeah. The only option. I just is want to be on the what record. Areas you can restrict. That's the only option you have, and I think we're all in agreement. Yeah. You know, we defined what areas we're mm -hmm. going to restrict this to. Other than that, there's no there's no vari variation. So I don't have a problem making a motion motion to recommend it. I, I don't have a problem it just going into effect, and then none of us basically took a stand okay, with this. Well, why don't we even have to her? vote on it? It's why can't we go into effect? Because it becomes confusing to the public when they look at our ordinance and it's different than state state code. No, but you're so saying as of a certain date, our it's going to go in anyway. Right? Uh, we have to amend the order. We have to amend okay, our language. Uh, our so. internal docs. I think we need to go ahead with it, and then we'll let the city council uh, take it from there because we're just recommending it to them. So, um, the only comment I would have is on the short-term rentals. You know, I guess that could be changed by the city later on, right? Yeah. We should have that discussion soon. I'd be interested. Well, in I've got an ordinance drafted, and and Brian and Brian's reviewed it as well. We've just had so many applications, <coughs> yeah. as you've seen tonight. Yeah. We just have not been able to get that before you. Okay. Well, um, are we ready to make a motion for approval? Is there, is there anything we can do to add to this motion <laughs> to show to show our our our, our disdain our disdain yeah. for? For the fact that this this the state is overreaching and Objection. forcing us on us, the, the better thing you can do is reach out to your legislators right. and and talk to them and and um, you know oh, ask them down. you know just to you know get a heads up of what's coming next year and give your give your voice. So. Right, you have that challenge, Scott, and all of us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, are we ready for a motion then? Who would like to make that? Steve? I'll make one, okay. but you probably won't okay. want her to record it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I, 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 I better not. Okay. I'll make the motion. I move to recommend uh, approval of Ordinance Amendment 2021-10-0 as presented. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Okay. okay. But you're who saying the, nay who because you nay? don't like the state overreach, exactly. right? Because that, I think the content the of okay. the bill is positive. For, I wanted to for, say nay uh, just because it kind of sounds cool. Yeah. <laughs> she likes I okay, second so. her nay. <laughs> we were, I, I get your point. You were doing just fine. And to her point, you were doing just fine. All right, all right, all right. Your point. But yeah. Renee was the only actual nay as far as records. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, I think we're ready to um, go ahead with it. If there's anything from Planning Commission. Willing to meet on the on June twenty or July twenty seventh, um, except for Mike, who'll be having knee surgery. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. Thank you. We've we've got a number of items that, or, or applicants have requ asked me if you'd be willing to hold that meeting and, and stuff. So, okay. The items are you expecting? Uh, the storage units will probably come back again. Low book sales, um, <laughs> more than likely, uh, and then uh, this subdivision mm -hmm. that you heard tonight. Um, I just wanted to mention that, gosh, I just heard rumblings tonight from Anders that he's he's going to be leaving us, <gasps> which is a sad Anders. story. Is that the position I see the position open for? Yeah. I, I'm going back to school, so. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> My wife knows. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> I don't know if our six-month-old knows. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tell us what you're doing, Anders. Yeah, I'm going to do a degree in public. Well, good luck to you, but that's a big loss to us. We've really yeah. appreciated you. you. And well, yeah. I'll, I'll be at their next meeting, but, um, but yeah, I appreciate all of you. And I love it. I love working here, so <laughs> a lot of quality. Okay. And I have one more. Go ahead. 
Just a comment. Renee's not gonna like this comment. <laughs> I've got I've got six Bambies in my backyard sleeping there every night. <laughs> I'm getting real tired. <laughs> if, if you contact the chief, they've got a. There is an here. ordinance that <laughs> several other municipalities are now passing to open up control. I think women ought to look at it. We, we have one. Well, well, they did. We have one. You just have to pay for it. You, you have to pay for the track. Yeah, but the. That they said they weren't going to do it anymore. Yeah, we did it. The Bonnets and I did it. And they said we're not going to do that anymore. They, did. they won't do it. Really? Who said that? The city? No, or the, the company? Wildlife Services. And then there's a contract. But there is a state has passed an ordinance where they will hire hunters to come in. and, and Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I, it's giving a joke. They won't come to private property. Mm. Well, I'm going to bring you. I'll bring you the ordinance that I know Bluffdale's doing it. Yeah, share that with Ar archery. And Brian, yeah. Brian's kind of been mm -hmm. the one working on that. Archery. Archery. Because mm -hmm. oh. I think the city looked at the liability of insurance or something like that. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was a couple it's years. It's just ago. about two years yeah. ago. The council spent yeah. multiple. <laughs> And, and a lot of public input. <laughs> I, think, I think where it left off that the feedback I've been hearing from citizens is they would love that the state would make the tracks temporary and have a contract where we'll, you know, get the tracks can be brought to your property, but the, the tracks will get moved where residents have to pay the fee to contact that animal. I mean, these deer are not from the mountains. They're, they were born and reared here, and they're and, living And that's here. their home. I know. <laughs> but if I remember, My home is their home. <laughs> but if I remember, wasn't it pretty much a 50-50 split in the community? Some, everybody oh, wanted it, some people didn't. I'm getting impaled on the fence. Oh. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> even bleeding hard. I don't... I just don't think we want to pull up to the temple and have a deer hanging on the fence that's been impaled. Which that's not cool. It happened, it's happened in our neighborhood before, and that's why I brought it up. I happened in my backyard. <laughs> <laughs> so it's put up within felony fence. I think it's $150 the for the contractor to do that. Is that what I heard, that number? $150 to dispose of one of those deer? <laughs> Somewhere in there. But Rob, aren't you saying that they, that's not even an option now? No, they, they, they won't do it. And, um, but there's a new ordinance, and I know Bound, Bluffdale is doing it, where it gives, and I think the state will provide the funds for hunters to come in and take them out, and then they can, they, I think they have to donate the food, to the meat to other sources, but. They would still have oh, to be so testing Brian, on that. Brian Hawes is our, our resident expert on that. I'll give you a call. City, I'll so. send you a copy of what. Yeah, Brian, Brian would be the best one. that he's, okay. been, he's, he's been working on this for a long time. I just need to bring back legalized poaching. Yeah. <laughs> legalized. I, I do have one. Just, have it, just, open, just open up a, like the two-week period <laughs> in the city of Linden. It's okay to... Um. <laughs> There's you know, we went them through. With your car. I mean, you can <laughs> <I'm> try. <trying. laughs> they jump out in front of you. <laughs> we went through all of those um, a while back. A lot of work on the Linden Marina, mm -hmm. and and the group that was going to come in there and do all of the improvements and all those things. Um, I was down there, took some kayaks down there, and we were just down there playing. I I didn't see that anything had changed. Oh, yeah, they, they put in... Has it? Yeah, it yeah. just a bunch of pad sites with hookups. And, Is there? Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I was impressed. Maybe I didn't go far enough over. No, it's uh, right there at the entrance. As soon as you pull down in, it's right off to the right where they put all the... They put in all the water in. and sewer connections. They okay. when, I, when I was down there, they had, of those 14 big uh, pad sites, I want to, at least 10 of them had some 
you know, really big okay. new RVs. I probably just didn't there. go over far enough to yeah, see. If you look, it's, you know, the, well, you'll the, pass you know, it if you go down to the, where you dock your boat. Yeah. And with yeah. that one, they've only done one. Yeah. 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 Okay. But they have been parking RVs in there for okay. a year now, haven't they? Well, I'm yeah. wrong then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm wrong. But it's hard to miss, it's hard, you can miss it because it's just you've got right. the paved area and then it's gravel yeah. and then it's all asphalted where, so so you probably yeah. saw the gravel area and things. Right. And, and it right. kind of backs up to the old Geneva Resort tree area and okay. heels and kind of, okay. it's easy to miss if you're just driving down to the marina. Okay. Uh, you know, and I, and I have been down there a few times to make sure because, you know, they were putting RVs scattered everywhere right. and, you know, they they are now just required on the pad sites and so. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good to know. And then also on the island dance mm -hmm. facility, I are, are they making changes? They're very close. They, okay, because so it they, doesn't they, appear, I they, mean, you don't see anything from the outside. Oh yeah, they've done a, they've done a lot. They just stuck with the the addition. Okay. Um, addition on the north side. In there. the parking yeah. lot area. So the council gave them until June thirtieth to finish everything because of the issue they had getting concrete. I've been working with them on the last final few things. Okay. They they poured all their ADA requirements with conc with the concrete. Okay, last and I'm gonna look closer. Friday, so. Mm -hmm. But then don't they still have an additional time to do the curb and sidewalk mm -hmm. all the way around? Yes, they've got till the end of next year. And the parking area and, and that the parking kind of area thing. stuff. But, but okay, yeah, the that's building kind of what I was looking at. The only thing left on that is finishing the ADA restroom. And then they're pretty much done with everything else. Okay, okay. 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 I, I have a question. I've got one question, oh, too. Okay. <laughs> because I've got neighbors that we got the blitz again from, I, I'm guessing it's the developer. We all got stuff on our door. Mm -hmm. Um, they're all curious because there was a meeting about a possible lawsuit and so everybody wants to know what's going on with the Norton property. Yeah, th that was in a closed door meeting with the council to discuss the lawsuit, so. Um, but I guess, is there anything pending on that? I mean, any. You I, know, I I'm, I'm not gonna say unless, unless Brian were here because um, cause that was in a closed door meeting, so. So what were the notices that people got on their door? We got a nice drawing of a beautiful residential and then a very, un, to, at least to me, something very unrealistic. We're going to put all the big commercial buildings back against the residential and we'll put all the parking out on State Street. And so our dumpsters right scare, next to you. Just to scare the neighbors. And and the neighbors are just like, we thought we were done with this. And they're... Yeah, so I just wondered if there was any... Not maybe lawsuit, but any. I, I'd be interested in talking to Brian. Maybe we'll get to him about the ordinance and what it says. And okay, how long does uh, do you have to asphalt the road after you connect water, sewer, and electrical? Um, you what do you mean? Like for a development? Fourth North. I mean, it's been cut and. Attached sewer and water, and well, it's just sitting there. They're across from Holdaways and that area there. There's some improvements to 400 North as well. So I'm not sure what the holdup is. I, I do have a bond. I know for all that. A lot of developers will do it and have it asphalted the next day. Yeah, I don't know. I know we're doing a streets project on 400 North as well. So I don't know if there's some conflict with oh, with that. Okay. They they were rolling asphalt. It's closed. It was closed. It's today. been closed for several days. While they're doing something else yeah. in there. On four? It's yeah. closed today. Yeah. yeah. You can't go down four. I haven't been on it today, but maybe they are doing it today. That's why I was late. I had to go the long way here. <laughs> <laughs> why is not it? I thought it would be on time for once, and the road was closed. I had to go clear all the way around. Okay. Well, let's make a motion to close. <laughs> okay. That works. Do I have a motion to adjourn? <laughs> so moved. Second. Okay. Okay, motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We've been here a long time. And thanks to both of you for being here with us. Yeah, you should have seen that picture. Is that right? She put a, an entertainment center right against the wall, against the neighbors on 600 North. Then she put an auto detailing right next to the Aldi's. I'm sure that was total spite.
to the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. Like, seriously.